Hey there, you're listening to You Still Going On About That with Rob Israel and Joseph K. You can find us anywhere you can download podcasts. You could also find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at YSGOAT. Thanks for listening. I'm Rob Israel. I'm Joseph K. And you still going on about? That. All right, Joseph. It's February 16th, 1030. We're probably going to do this until, I don't know, February 17th. Probably, yeah. I like it. Half hour, hour yeah. change into it. <laughs> so we're doing a double shift again. <laughs> so you always in the uh, YS Goat uh, salt mine. Right. Yeah. You know? It's a good thing, though, that there's these guys out there protesting in our, in our name. <laughs> Those truckers, they're, 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 they're all about our freedom. Right? Yes. It's, all about, uh, it's about the people, the regular people. It's an organic yeah. uprising. It's not um, an extra turf campaign. No. Pushed by like the worst people in the in the planet or anything like that. It's right. No, no, it's an organic uprising. Um, just as we work in the salt mines, these people are the salt of the earth. Is uh, yeah. I, I always say that if the cops are supporting your protest, you're on the right side. That's right. always been, that's a that's a known fact, right? It's like, a good indicator. You're out there protesting, and the cops are giving you like a bottle of water, shaking your hand. If you are obnoxiously breaking the law while waving a swastika flag, and the cops pull up and ask if you'd like to, you know, play with the sirens in their squad car or something, um, <laughs> then yes, you know all is right with your your movement. Is, is yeah, a it, it's a real yeah. legit movement, right? It's right. a legit movement. If the cop is not cracking you on the side of the head, but actually like saying, "Hey, cousin," yeah, or "Hey, I'm in my cop uniform, but when I get out later, I will, I'll meet you later for the meeting." Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll talk years. about that later. What are we talking about, Joseph? Let's get to the list. We have uh, we we have a, a good list here. We're going to talk about the Super Bowl. Because uh, if yeah. you know us, you know we are a sports ball affectionate. Well, I'm, I am no, you do. You, you put do out tweets <laughs> and I don't understand. I don't like them. You're like, oh, it's Sirio Agnews uh, did the ball and he threw it against the yard line. But Bob Packer <laughs> with his crazy ideas. And I'm like, yeah. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, you, I don't care. You should see me in Quidditch season too. It's just <laughs> Quidditch season. <laughs> That's not real. Get the yeah. <laughs> um, we were talking about the Super Bowl and the ads. Uh, uh, most, most particularly the uh, in the halftime show and the crypto ads. Um, and, oh, yeah. uh, oh, talk, talk about you and I have kind of come uh, thought that maybe uh, the, the character Gil from The Simpsons is kind of em- emblematic of the, the crypto bro movement um we're talking about truth social uh trump's new uh not at all like twitter platform no, not a knockoff of twitter in any way whatsoever he didn't just pay a guy to copy paste the code and then change like the color from blue to red literally that's what it is it's it's like they be great if like the bird instead of the twitter bird it had like it's just like Trump's side profile. <laughs> like with his stupid hair, because it kind right, of right. looks like a bird also. Yes. Um, and we'll Dutch talk about boy, whatever he's got going. Trump's tail. social media platform. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, Russia-Ukraine uh, thing that's kind of heating up. And that, that's, yeah. I, I know a little bit about this, and it's, it is, uh, it's an interesting and kind of confusing story. And we'll talk about the Canadian truckers and their grass move, uh, grassroots movement to uh, <laughs> to keep that grass is a, more of a, a, a kind of a, what do they call that like a astroturf breeding yes or, or like a grass like a, I don't know if that's the term you use breed when you describe grass but like uh, you know there's different types of grass right and, this is um, this is the artificial kind this is, this is super artificial <laughs> But we were first gonna we were first gonna talk about a um a series that we've been watching. I watched the whole thing. You you are a chunk uh, into it. Um, I inventing, am a chunk. Thank you. 
<laughs> you watch the show. Thank you. Anna, please wait. I appreciate uh, I mean, that. Way. <laughs> uh, inventing Anna, uh, which is um, a series just came out on Netflix about three, four, uh, about a week ago, I guess. Yeah, what's what's her name? The actress. She's also the girl in Ozark who's like, ah, I'm a catfish wrangler. She's yeah, got like the, the poodle hair. The woman who plays Ruth on uh, on Ozark is Anna in this show. Her name is Julia something. Uh, he Julia flex those wacky accents. Julia Garner. I'll tell you, man. Yeah, I, he's I great said, at it. I sat through like several episodes before I realized that's who it was. Oh, you didn't realize that? I knew that going into it. No clue. I, I was like, oh, my, look, it's her. It's her with different hair. My wife started watching it and she's like, I think you would like this. And I, I just sat down meaning to only kind of give it a cursory uh, look, you know. Go sh- into it negatively because your wife likes it. You know, <laughs> no, like, I was just like, crap. okay, well, if I, if I don't agree to watch a minute of it then i'm dismissing your opinion on something so i'm clearly right. going to sit down and i i sat down i got hooked pretty quickly it was really, never got really up again you, no your, not like, your underwear was crusted to the sofa these episodes are like a fucking hour and a half long each yeah really. long. we were watching one we're like yeah let's bang out an episode tonight right Lee was tired <laughs> was just watching an episode and then we're like man this episode and then i checked the time length and it was like another 40 minutes left i was like yeah this is i think it's probably because this is considered a mini series and now a uh, a series, so I guess the episodes are longer. Uh, I don't know how many how many are there. Uh, I think nine. And it's really? weird because, like, that if the eighth episode, if there are nine, I think there are nine. The eighth episode is at the end of it. It feels like it's done. Like you you feel like oh well, all that's that you know everything's resolved. But there's a whole other episode, and it's like another hour and a half where they wrap shit up even more. You know. Yeah. Um, but it's it's really good. Uh, it's the woman. I think the woman who did Grey's Anatomy is the showrunner. I mean, I like it. It's it's good. It's basically. I saw this story a couple of years ago about this yes. woman who like infiltrated high society, and it's kind of like I don't feel bad for these people <laughs> that no. she infiltrated. It. You know, they're just mad that she got away with it for as long as she did. <clears throat> I think it's kind of funny though because she's supposed to be what? What is she supposed to be? She is supposed to be like some German heiress or something. Yeah, she is supposed to be an heiress. And her father is supposed to be like after the Soviet Union crumbled, he got money. Okay, that's why she has a Russian accent. Yes. Right. And so she left the Soviet Union and wound up in Germany. And she said her father, she gave all these weird stories that kind of hinted at her. Almost like an Anastasia type yes. story like anastasia yeah. is based on a <clears throat> she was the long lost uh what is it the czars or something yeah like that. right, right I, saw like the, I saw the animated movie that came out years ago <laughs> that was, I think good, that was yeah. like a very accurate film very accurate historical uh document i used to show that when i taught world history <laughs> you know like yeah watch this i'm gonna go I, i'm gonna have a little me time now <laughs> exactly i'm gonna read this hustler magazine while you uh, I gotta send the lineup for my fantasy sports ball team. (laughs) With that guy, that Cyclops guy. We gotta talk about him later too. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So that's the shtick. And uh, I don't wanna, I guess I don't wanna ruin it because it is still a a pretty new show and you haven't watched the the whole. I'm only like three or four episodes in. I don't remember the numbers of how, but I guess we have a lot more to go. But what I find interesting, so basically, like, the thing is, she's like a con lady, you know, she, Cons her way in, but like spoilers and anything. Like she dates this guy, and he's kind of like a con man too, in a yeah. way. Like he's putting out this app, but he has to trick people into giving him money. He's putting on a facade too. You find out like he doesn't really come from wealth either. It's yeah. like this whole, but she's even more like, uh, like it's it, it begins with her. She's in jail already. Um, I don't know what the exact crimes that they got her on. But there's just some funny moments in it. Like there's a part when like she gets invited on this boat and then you find out her and the guy basically stayed on there for like a week. And the lady, <laughs> the rich lady that she was like, get the fuck off that boat. <laughs> it's, like, it's like hundreds of thousands of dollars to keep all the people on yeah. there. Like, it's like super funny. And it's like, she gets away with it because she's able to trick these people thinking that she's some like, 
Russian yeah. princess or something. But if she was just some fucking pauper or average person, that lady, that rich lady wouldn't just be yelling at her. She would have her like fucking shot on sight. It, it um, is, and this is all based on a true story. This is stuff that really happened just like three, four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. She um, was on Instagram. Yeah. I don't think her accounts are up anymore, this girl, but like the photos exist. Uh, does Julia Garner look like her? Eh, not really. They do a good no. job of like changing it, but uh, who cares? Uh, right. She's really good in it. She's really good in Ozark. She's the one who's got that rancid accent that, uh, oh, yeah. like, and she yells and she's great. And and I don't think she has a normal voice. I mean, I have to say that that's not a normal voice. My apologies to rancid cat <laughs> like, uh, and uh, Russian. Uh, jewel thieves or whatever <laughs> i don't know <laughs> man. To them, but I, I mean like I, you know i did see her in one thing there was a show years ago on netflix it was only like one season it was like a weird show with um emma stone and jonah hill where they're like oh they, they're in like an institution or something huh. and they, they they go in these like weird they're in these machines or something that like analyze their dreams weird yeah, it's a weird. I'll find the name of it. It's definitely worth watching. Definitely, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. It's weird. It's a weird show. It was only on one season. I forgot who produced it. It was huh. like someone might have produced like a bigger movie. Came out like three years ago. I'll check that out. Yeah, it came out after, and I, I was, it came out at least after the first season of Ozark because she was in it and she plays the dead sister of Emma Stone's character. Like she, oh wow. Well. She, she was killed or whatever. But so you see like lots of flashbacks or what she exists in this virtual world in some way. Yeah. I don't even know. I have to like, I'll see if I can find a name. Actually, let me look it up real quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I figured, I'm surprised you didn't see it. You probably like it a lot. Uh, I'm a Stone, Jonah, Hill, Netflix show. And that has like a bunch of other people in it. It's yeah. called uh, Mani- Maniac. Yeah. It was oh. comedy drama one season. Uh, it had uh, Justin Theroux in it. Okay. Uh, she's in it. Julia Garner, Sally Fields in it. Bill Magnuson, who you've probably seen in other things. You probably, I don't, the name doesn't sound familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend it. Uh, who else? Who directed it? Directed by Carrie. Oh, I don't know. But that was like produced by someone who made like big movies. But yeah. she's in that. She's great in it too. And that's when I saw her. I'm like, wait, she doesn't sound like she uh, lives in a bog right. in West Virginia. <laughs> so she that doesn't, not- as far as I know, or she's really good at hiding her bog accent. Uh, but she's great. She's good in this show. What I like about it, and maybe we'll talk about more of her yeah, friendship. Yeah. They kind of show you how she kind of works her con well and how she kind of she tricks people into making people think she knows what she's talking about she yeah. negs them she negs them if you see it when she meets someone she kind of insults them kind of brings them down breaks them down a bit and then kind of makes them like brings up their confidence in the end yeah she's a con woman i mean con man whatever she's right con otters <laughs> con artists and like but like at the same time it's like I don't know, all these people con artists in some ways. I mean, they all kind of, I mean, some of them are born into that wealth, but some right. aren't, and you have to work your way into it. It's just that she got caught. She there probably... is, yeah, I think that's, it reminded me a lot of like the, the book, The Great Gatsby. Um, and the whole idea with that is that like, all wealthy people are crooked, but like the old money wealthy people don't like the new money wealthy people. You know what I mean? Like they think they're well, better. Well, because the old money, people, the new money people had to earn it. And it's like the old money people who were probably born wealthy. So yeah. they don't want new people in their, in their class, you know? Well, the, the other thing that I thought was really interesting about this series, um, and I love the series. I, I really did like it and I'd recommend it. But like, it's, a, it's probably one of the few shows I've watched that I liked where they were all terrible people. Like none yeah, of these people I mean, are good. Like, They're all I like terrible. The, uh, there's a scene they show her where like a boyfriend completely flakes off and mm-hmm. like hides. 
because he's like basically hiding from investors because yeah. <laughs> he's because he's kind of a con artist too most people who start apps and convince people uh and don't deliver i mean that's a con that's a con. i mean it's like those you know it's like why i never did things like uh go fund not go fundings but like little kickstarters yeah, yeah. I, don't do, I don't do pre-orders i don't do any of that stuff because I don't want to be beholden to anything and I can't, if I didn't deliver on it, you yeah. know, I'm That's not going to sell. I don't feel comfortable selling people an idea and then being like, oh yeah, don't worry. I'll get it's, to you. I'll get it's in the mail. Like, what? It's in the mail. Yeah, it's coming, buddy. Don't worry. <laughs> Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. Well, it's a but, great uh, show. There's a good scene where she, this is like older lady that they deal with, Nora, I think, or whatever. Mm -hmm. and she kind of goes with her to like kind of see she basically gets turned into like a little assistant in a way but she gets to kind of hang out and see all these older rich ladies like yeah. all like big in their fields or whatever and it's just an interesting it's an interesting show i don't know if it's for everyone um, yeah but like you know if you're into like warhammer or any of those type of <laughs> Those games, I would not say that, you know, inventing Anna is for you. Probably uh, not. You know, like if you're like, hey, I want to watch UFC. I don't know if inventing Anna is for you. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Is Club it... of Fat followed by inventing Anna. <laughs> sure, why not? Man? Yeah. I mean, like if you had told, if you had described this no to way. me, I, I wouldn't have said this is like a show that would be up my alley. I mean, um, in a way. Book of Boba Fett is almost the same story as Inventing Anna. Boba Fett yeah. takes becomes the major domo. Yeah, it just sounds really funny if you say <laughs> <laughs> he's a major domo. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like something from the bully in the eighties would say. And uh, of Tatooine, and he's got to trick people into like yeah. basically respecting him. Now. Anna will use her uh, one. She's attractive, right? Yep. Uh, and uh, she's also will neg people with her yeah. funny accent. And Boba Fett also negs people with his funny accent, but he uses a rancor, right. <laughs> uh, which does not exist in reality. No. So that was huh. the same show. Right. And also, I did find it weird that. For two episodes in Benny Hanna, just... the focus just totally switched <laughs> to a character that was not even on the show. Right. And then there was like a baby. It's actually the Mandalorian, I think. Is what... Yeah, the Mandalorian came and hijacked <laughs> Inventing Anna too, which right. was odd. And I thought yeah. it was great. I was like, well, hey, it these works. are actually really good episodes, but you know <laughs> funny. When you have your own show, what's going on here? Yeah. All right, well, well I will finish it. Uh and uh, also, I think we'll probably talk about Peacemaker next yes. week because right? you, you it ends next this week. It's the last episode. You haven't watched it yet, so we'll, no, no. we'll probably talk about it a bit next week. So I guess let's go into uh, the Super Bowl. Yeah, right. What is that? Super Bowls. The it's the championship game of the NFL. Um, I, I like football a lot. <laughs> I wish. I watch um I watch football pretty regularly. Uh, I'm a big Eagles fan. Um were they on the uh, Super Bowl? No, they were not in the Super Bowl this year. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it was the Bengals, the band, yeah. the band, the Bengals. Right? The Bengals and the Rams. <laughs> was, that, was that a band, the Bengals? I... The Bengals was a band. This is the Bengals, uh, and it's based on a tiger, the Bengal tiger. Not a, to, not a girl group. Uh, no, um, and it was a good game. The, the Super Bowl was a good game. Uh, I didn't was it a good game. one? Like it actually had like yeah. good moments. I watched the whole game. Um, it was entertaining. It was close the whole time. You thought that at either I, at any moment either team could win. Um, so that was fun. I you know I like that. It's better than a, a blowout. Um, the two things that were interesting, more interesting about the Super Bowl to the average person maybe, is that um, the Super Bowl halftime show was basically a, a 90s rap extravaganza you know there's a lot of artists rap from the 90s Bible. yeah 
what was like uh, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and Eminem and uh, who else was there? 50 Cent, I think, was there. Uh, Mary J. Blige, is that it? I don't think it was her. There's a woman there. Um, I don't know, I'm, to be honest, that, that genre is not my, I'm not like super good with this, uh, um, with the artists of it. Uh, but it was, I, look, it was actually, I thought, a pretty tame, well put together show that. In, it was like a pretty tame halftime. I know uh, yeah. Eminem did that kneel. <laughs> It's just you know, that's not right, you know. Well, NFL doesn't like when people kneel because uh, it's weird. Like when I was a kid, or when I was a young adult, um, artists like Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, and uh, later on Eminem, um, th- they were like really considered kind of dangerous, boundary pushing artists. Oh my know, god, like, so dangerous! Well that first Snoop Dogg album was pretty raunchy, you know, and like, uh, I mean, I guess when you think about it, it was like, you know, we're living it now over 30 years later. Of course, it's easy to say like, oh yeah, who cares? But back then it was crazy. Yeah. It was a big deal. I remember like I had the Snoop Dogg album doggy style, um, but I didn't leave it out. Yeah, what a great time to live in back then. You just had to do like, you just had to be like slightly provocative and you, like, yeah. they would talk about you for like years. Like, remember that movie Sex Lies on Videotape? It was, yeah. Like, yeah, it was James Spader's first movie. We talked about it. It was like NC-17. It yep. was like, dude, that, that came out today. No, that movie Yeah, and if it came out today, no one would even think nah. once about it. But yeah. it was like, he got booby and penis in it. it. Oh my God, it's the early, it's the late 80s. We're not used to these things. We're scared. We're scared of things. Yeah. We were all like unfrozen caveman lawyers. We were all like, yeah, like everything is like scary. So all you have to do is just be like slightly provocative. Well, and you, you make millions back then. Now that it's was, like, exactly. That was the most. I gotta kill thing. somebody and then announce like that you're like Kyle Rittenhouse, and then you get fame that way. But like Dr. Dre was a dangerous act, and um, not the man himself. He was a, a person, an artist. I have, yeah, I have no idea if he was like if if his gang shtick was like legitimate or. Invented. Did you ever see? Okay, wait, wait, hold on. Did you ever see Dr. Dre's original music? Um, I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there was nothing dangerous about him. If anything, he was like a big nerd. Google um, Dr. Dre's like vampire music. Oh, geez. All right. I'm not even joking. Let me see if I can find this. Dr. Dre uh, put out like a synth album or something before oh, the NWA. Dr. Dre uh, music before NWA. I mean, you gotta understand. It's an act. Now, yeah. what's his face probably lived. The, what's his face definitely probably lived it a little bit more. Uh, the one who isn't uh, with us anymore. Easy E. Easy E. Well, yeah. yeah. But like, let me see if I could find it. Well, as he, you're looking for some it, weird. Doctor Dre is still embarrassed by his secret musical past. There we go. Doctor Dre is still embarrassed. Dr. Dre first took the music world by storm in the 80s as far as the rap group, NWA. But Dr. Dre wasn't scary. He was simply a member of the world-class wrecking crew, a hip-hop R&B group that performed Morris Day and the Times dance routines and shimmery jackets. Oh, yeah. Part, Dr. Dre I mean, rocked less intimidating mock overalls and even a comic stethoscope to fit the doctor persona. <laughs> he was yeah. like a doctor. <laughs> I remember that. It's really funny. Yeah, yeah looking, dude. Like, it's called marketing, buddy. Well, marketing makes people believe all kinds of funny things. Regardless, it, they they were they were all considered the act. Was, yeah. Again, I still believe a lot of it. Listen, it, it was a big deal back then. Yeah. Now it's like, now it's retro. Well, that's <laughs> it's it. It's like, like it is like that was what really striking to me is that. They went from being like probably the most dangerous artists on the planet to the stars of the Pepsi halftime show in, in like a really kind of family friendly event and environment. He's and by like by Dre, I think he became a billionaire by yeah. those, those headphones. Like it so, wasn't even 
Well, but they're all like multimillionaires, and and even oh, yeah. Eminem, Eminem is like tamed down considerably. So well, they're also well into their like fifties. These are not yeah. young yeah. men. I mean, they're... right? But the... you know who what you know who is not having it? <laughs> the world's <laughs> oldest teenager, and by <laughs> oldest I mean like he's technically young by age, but like really old like like an old boomer yeah. or grandpa like like he thinks anything outside of like who's the guy with the bubbles in the 40s like it was like this the big band oh, music. um uh lawrence welk right yeah like yeah. if it's not like anything uh, outside of lawrence welk is it's way too edgy charlie kirk he's a, his head is gigantic and his face is small Yes. That the NFL is now the league of sexual anarchy. Which this is crazy. This show should not be allowed on television. Uh, what did he watch? Did he, well, did he have a porn on by accident? I don't, it's funny. You, you texted me afterwards and asked, like, what the deal was. And I hadn't seen anything on Twitter afterwards. I just, I watched the game and kind of I like, just saw this guy's tweet and I was like, What? I watched the, the halftime show. Now, to be fair, I wasn't like super into it. Like I said, I mean, I, I just kind of had it on and I was watching it, talking at the same time. Um, I, I'm stunned that any of it would have be considered provocative or crazy. And a lot of people put like these little side by side images of just like random NFL cheerleaders looked incredibly more like provocative than the artists. Charlie you Kirk know, is a douchebag first of all it's like they need they need to create controversy when there even is no controversy yeah like you know these are the people who took dr seuss company the seuss family foundation whatever i don't even know if i'm saying name seuss right yeah said we're removing some books from our catalog because they're outdated and they probably right. don't even sell well who cares and the right took that and turned it into a months of like they are taking yeah. cat in hand away from you. And by they, the Jews or something. <laughs> like some kind yeah. of weird they. There was a theoretical they. They're always, George they're kind of Soros. Always, yeah, it's always Soros. It's it's crazy. Uh, this guy who doesn't even fall like I think the top 10 billionaires is the most powerful man in the world. It's pretty mm. amazing. Um, but they just have to create controversy when it doesn't even exist so what because it was uh, or some of them would say insane shit like because you know it was heavily black people yep. doing the art so that bothered them this one guy's tweet man he's like some i don't even know who this guy is something adams or whatever some right-wing asshole he said something like there should have been ted nugent and kid rock or whatever. <laughs> and it's like well these people have values yeah. Oh, these people are pigs. They're Ted Nugent those, like talks like twelve year olds in the seventies and eighties. Like all those Kid Rock tweets were great though. The ones where it says like people were just saying like Kid Rock makes music for people who know exactly how much like uh, like a, a Benadryl you can legally buy. At yeah, Walgreens my favorite or, was Kid Rock makes music for people who uh, need to blow into something to start their car. <laughs> Like the alkalizer thing, it could blow that into legally start the car. Yes, makes but music for people who still smoke indoors. <laughs> yeah, like I, I like, I don't know. I don't even care. Like I said, I didn't even. I don't even think I even saw any of it. I just find it. I just like watching these morons react to it, and they try to create something. It didn't work. You know, yeah. they figured it's Sunday. We could go right into Monday and just dominate the whole entire week with this and it wasn't controversial so what's there to talk about yeah i it mean was... there was no nipple gate or whatever no. which i always found really funny about the nipple thing because like people were like oh my god just like, like that whole thing was totally planned like yeah, very she was wearing some bizarre jewel around her nipple and like she wouldn't be wearing that if it wasn't no. planned and she, he would have just let her boop would have fell out and it would have been like then it would have been nipple game <laughs> right. it was just some stupid thing i don't even know. doesn't even matter i'm just glad that like no one took the bait and there's nothing i mean what the hell is he even saying sexual anarchy what the yeah. fuck are you watching it was just weird i mean i think uh, if i'm gonna guess i think he thought like he heard all those names 
he kind of he probably didn't himself, but he probably like had people around him that were telling him like, oh, these are you know dangerous artists back in the day, and it just seemed like a danger. I.e., they were black. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, I mean that's the that's the obvious. Uh, this guy tweeted Fifty Cent in a tank top turns Charlie Kirk on. <laughs> that must be it. Because it, like, what was it like? The, so was a Charlie Kirk get off my lawn. Like, like, dude, you're 28, man. Yeah. Like, it's know. just crazy. I mean, like these. A lot of these artists. You're right. They, they've gotten older, and like so many of you're them. You're like are, memes. Half of them. Snoop Dogg's yeah. a joke. Snoop Dogg yeah. was even a joke back in the 90s. I don't know why he said his music was dangerous. He was always like a more comical, funnier rap. Yeah, he, like his videos are like more on the he, comical side. He played into that gang affiliation real heavily at the time. Whether or not it was true, I don't know. But like he he did a lot of stuff that was like gang oriented, and that was I, I, think, that was I like, think a lot of that again is just like, theatrics, dude. Oh yeah, no, I look. I don't. I have no. I remember idea. getting into a fight with some not even a fight, but just some guy in high school. We we're talking about the band Pantera, right? Yeah. And he, you know, we. Around that time period, you, you'd see them in concert and all their shirts would have like weed symbols on our thing. Yeah. And the guy would be like, Yeah, man, that's what they're about, man. They're all about fucking smoking fucking weed, man. And this other like and this other guy were like, dude, it's a gimmick. Like, yeah. They got you hook, line, sinker. And you know it's a gimmick because before Cowboys from Hell, their first couple albums, they were like glam rockers, and they clearly couldn't that didn't sell. Mm-hmm. So then all of a sudden they got down home nitty gritty and started smoking a ton of weed and got real heavy. And it's like, and then it sold. <laughs> and I think, and I, I need to look on Wikipedia or something to find, I don't think his name actually was Dimebag, you know? I don't no, think that I was do not think Dimebag was his real name. But actually what I heard was his name is Nickel. <laughs> really weird. Yes, yeah, yeah, so. Well, I anyway. That... But, but I mean, like, I just saying, like, a lot of the stuff, I would say this, the majority... <laughs> Majority, majority of most all music, mm-hmm. musical acts and everything is theatrics. There's people who do come from some shitty area. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's a kind of part of the marketing. The funny thing is, it's the people who probably never get away from it. Those are the ones that are dead. Yeah, yeah. The ones that were way too into it and couldn't and didn't leave it and anything. They got even further into the bullshit. Yeah, and I would imagine with them, I, I guess I'm speaking kind of like. For just like educated guests, I'll bet you often it's not even them; it's the the people around them, like the the the. the well, that's personal, always been the case yeah. with a lot of a lot of musicians and stuff. They get, you know, they hang out with the wrong people. Yep. Yeah, that's tough. The wrong drugs or whatever, and then there's a reason why they're dead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, you know. You and Charlie Kirk will think it was a very dangerous act, and uh... <laughs> it's just weird. I mean, like, like I don't know. I, like I said, there's all these the... like I, I saw TikToks of like people having Super Bowl parties, and it was like all these middle aged white people, yeah, dancing like crazy. I mean, they're having a party, and then when the air was on, all the kids like thirteen, like cringing yeah. at watching their parents dancing because it's it's the parents music that's the joke that's the joke so when i was a kid we'd have these stupid like concert in the park that my parents would make me fucking go to all the yeah. time yeah it's like, like, shit. Shit. Or like yeah, it's free concerts in the park pier noon yeah all this shit and i'm like i don't want to see this crap like this is lame as fuck and like i was like eight or nine i'm like i want to go home and see tales of the crypt i don't want to watch this shit right. you know we didn't have you know if you didn't videotape it if you had a vcr or if you like, you know, you can just watch it anytime you want. There's no streaming. Right. And like, but I was like, okay, that was like the late 80s. These groups were big in like the late 60s. That was only yeah. 20 years earlier. Dude, this shit is 30 years ago. Fucking parents' music. Well, my I mean, daughter's... it still sells. It sells well, but like the joke <sighs> is, is that like, these people, it, it, they're not considered a, uh, I mean, the joke is they're a nostalgic act. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, band, huh? it's like 50s music was to me as a kid. That's what this is to my kid. You know, we're, I mean, taking, it, my, we're, we're taking a, a, 
our son to see uh uh fuck what's the name of the band circle jerks oh and okay yeah well jeez awesome. yeah and i'm like i mean it's awesome music but like yeah, the music's fucking 40 years old yeah it's like an oldie <laughs> show yeah it is <laughs> every Jeez. year that guy loses it the singer has like these dreads yeah. every time i see him he has like one less dread because he's been balding you know it's yeah. like, you lose, like it just a whole dread comes off <laughs> <laughs> in one piece yeah one it's, piece. Uh, it is like weird uh, i don't know i mean like i i do occasionally get these moments where i look at like like i'm watching tv and i see a commercial for law and order and like ice t is playing a cop you know or, or well, he's been playing that for like over he's been that yeah. character for like over a decade he was that character for longer than he was ice t yeah honestly, you know yeah. i mean like if you yeah. ask most people that's probably his persona and ice cube you know when he's not like making anti-semitic rants on twitter he's <laughs> been like these, you know, like kind of like hard. Oh, he's been in like family movies yeah. a long time ago. Are we there yet? This movie's only like 10, 15 years old. Yeah. So I mean, I mean that's is... like that's like the joke. It's like this douchebag, Charlie Kirk's trying to like create this controversy out of nothing. And it's like, dude, the people who love this music are like in their 40s and 50s. Yeah. And half of them are probably Republican. If not, oh, you know oh, what I mean? Tons like, of, yeah. I'll and you. they're like, we grew up on this. We love it. And uh, like, shut the fuck up, Charlie. Read the yeah. fucking room. You fucking it was loser. a big miscalculation, I think, uh, on his part or his team's part or whatever. Oh, uh, well, well, his team. <laughs> the, other, the other thing about the Super Bowl. And we were Wait, he doesn't about, write tweets on a toilet like I do? <laughs> the other. Uh, Another banger. <laughs> on the, and in the Twitter field sphere, uh, is um the crypto so ads. This or... tweet will make a big splash, <laughs> just like this dude. I got him now. Uh, the, there's a lot of crypto ads in the Super Bowl. Well, the, the big thing about the Super Bowl is there's is the ads. Yes. Like that's always been like a big They're part fun. of it. Yeah. And every year you find out like the ads get more expensive. Yep. And I mean, the joke is they air on the Super Bowl, but really, on the day of the day of like internet and everything, I mean, you could get people watching ad anywhere at any time. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Super Bowl ad just to get attention, to get it, the the fact that you could say like we paid for an ad Super Bowl, like that gets the attention. If no one oh, even yeah. watches the ad at the Super Bowl, they're going to see your ad somewhere else. Right. Um. You know, they had some movies and TV shows. The big one, we'll talk about Doctor Strange in a bit, but like yeah. the big one was like supposedly like the joke was it was like a lot of electric car company commercials. Yeah. Uh, there was a, like a Dr. Evil one I watched, which was kind of funny. Oh, uh, right. No Austin, no Austin Powers, it was Dr. Evil and like number two and his son, uh, played by uh, what's his name, Seth. Green. Seth, uh, Green, yeah, yeah, that's always like a very funny back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it was just an ad for like electric car vehicles, and supposedly there was like a bunch of them. But you know, it's like, hey, that's cool. Like, this is yeah. good carbon footprint, all that. But then, like, people are like, no, we have to have balance. Right. Let's, that, but let's put out some things that are really awful for the environment. You know, crypto, yeah. crypto yes. ads. And uh, yeah, supposedly there was like a ton of ads. I saw one with Larry David, which was kind of weird and disappointing. I found it odd because now I don't know if he was. I always thought he. Was, I know his ex-wife was a huge environmentalist, okay. and I always thought he was too. So I find it odd that he would be in a crypto ad. I just feel like did he not get like information? He doesn't need the money. The guys were no. just fucked. Like I mean, it, it on the surface, it's a phony ad. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's, it's got a good shape. It's like a, a naysayer. Uh, he plays like his Larry David character, a naysayer in every era. Like he's showing yes. the toilet, he laughs it off. Uh, Coffee, the, wheel, the light bulb, yeah, yeah, the wheel, the head, the what was it, the Walkman, the Walkman, yeah. Yeah. all these different things, and him laughing off. And then with the crypto thing, it ends with that, and he's like, "I'm never wrong," you know, like, haha. And then it's like really patronizing when you think about it. It's like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, this is not the big step that of uh, you know 
the toilet was. I mean, you you will be flushing your money down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess there's a theme, but like it's I've seen that similar ads to like uh, there's a Matt Damon one that I saw in the movie theater where it's like him walking through great achievements in human history, yeah. and then it's a crypto ad, and we're like, what? I mean, now I know that you're a big weird crypto guru. Oh yeah. Uh, and, diamond uh, hands, baby. Diamond, yeah, to the moon is your yeah. catchphrase. You, you wear a uh, all your clothes have a Bitcoin uh, logo or whatever it is, the fake yep. thing. Did you, ever, did you see the animated thing? That weird crypto world cartoon? Um, I don't know if I saw that. Oh my god, it's so weird and creepy. Uh, well, regardless, there's a lot of crypto ads, and I, I essentially said, I wonder how many idiots are gonna like just lose a ton of money in the next couple of weeks. Well, that's, that's my knock on it. I, and it is true. I, I do like cryptocurrency a lot and um, I, I have cryptocurrency and um, I believe in cryptocurrency in general. You know, I mean, I, not, not every single one and I don't believe in NFTs or anything like that. But like I, the, the idea of cryptocurrency is it powers uh, financial instruments and smart contracts and stuff like that. Uh, all that stuff makes sense to me. Um, I do think though that like what they're selling is like kind of bullshit because to the a- they're they're selling this get rich quick thing to the Which average user where the con is. Yeah, and that's not that's not likely to happen for most people. They're not you know? selling it as a utility as they claim they are. They're selling right. it as a, hey, put your money into this, you will double yes. your money in like a, a week. Right. And they're 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 not adhering to any of the rules that financial companies have to adhere to. They're they're putting it out there as like this is an app that does decentralized, blah, blah, but like people are doing it to get rich quick. And the average person is much more likely to lose a lot of money than make a lot of money if they just start randomly. Well, isn't the- isn't the joke is these companies that are putting the ads out? It's like there's a lot of people, there's a very limited amount of people that actually own a large amount of it. And if a ton of people go in and buy it, a lot of these people will now, especially they call them whales, yeah, as a term for it, whales, which yeah. are like the people who own like a ton of crypto. If one of those guys like decide to cash in, mm-hmm. it will just, it will sink. Yeah. value which is insane that's not how money should work money should not money should not lose value based on somebody taking money out of the bank right like, yeah like me taking money out of the bank should not affect the value for somebody getting like you know i was gonna go out to dinner but this guy right, took out right. 10 million crypto and now uh, my money is worth four times less than it was this morning yeah i mean my I, there was such good tweets. One guy had a really good tweet. It said like, "I never seen advertisements for money before." Like, <laughs> like even this other guy brought up like euros and all this other money that people have invested in. Like people I remember would invest in a euro. I was yeah. about like, yeah, because like at a point the euro was like double the dollar. It started right. like the joke was the euro was supposed to be the what the reason why the euro won make it easier to buy stuff in in, in Europe and everything like that and for tourists and everything. But it was also to also to like kind of balance out with the dollar, like kind of like be on par with the U.S. dollar. So right. exchanges would be super easy, and the euro ended up actually being like double what the dollar was at some point. Yeah. But you didn't see ads for euros on TV. No. Now you've seen ads for euros, <laughs> delicious uh, food. Right. Well. I don't know. It is, it is strange. Um, I don't, it's just, it's, it seems all shady and it is weird to see all these celebrities hop on the bandwagon and sell these things. I don't, I don't know how it's going to work out, but it I is. I just don't understand the Larry David. Like I said, it's a very entertaining ad on the surface. Yeah. It's very funny, but it's a shitty ad also. And it's kind of crappy that he did it. It's like, dude, you're supposed to be like, I don't know. It's weird. It's like, like I've seen Ted Cruz push Euro. I mean, push uh, Euro crypto. You know, like to me, if he's pushing it, eh, 
not a good thing. That guy's a piece of shit, you know? Like, I, I don't know. I think, like, it's it's just disappointing that, like, we're supposed to be in this, like, renewable energy. We're supposed to, like, you know, or finally starting to get, like, fleets of electric cars on the road, take the place of gas-guzzling cars. Yeah. More energy efficient, trying to do that. And then here comes this, like, really stupid thing that is incredibly dangerous to the environment out of just pure greed yeah. in the end of the day. You could call it whatever you want. You could say there's applications and you could say that it's there's utility to it and like that. And I'm sure there is. And sure. learning, but the reality is, is that it, to people, it's a get rich quick scheme. And it's kind of lame that the Super Bowl, like that was like the ads of the Super Bowl. Like, it's like not even a real product. It's just really odd. It's super odd. Well, I will say that if, and I would have to go back and look at the ads. I, I always thought the ads were more geared towards, they're not selling crypto per se. They're selling services that allow you to purchase crypto. And I know that's kind of like a, I mean, what, like that, that you need to know what those are before you buy crypto because you, I, you can't just go and buy it, you know? You I can't know. Just like, call up your bank and being like, put money on crypto, you know? I mean, well, the funny thing is now, all the apps, PayPal, yeah, Cash App, Venmo, Venmo, I think even my Chase app, um, they have a thing where you can put money into crypto, into yeah. Bitcoin. Really it's easy. weird. Um, too easy. Like, it's almost like it shouldn't be that easy. And I think that's where, dude, like, this shit's going to crash. It just is. People well, who got a cat, there's going to be people who don't really, are not as savvy or are like, let's say they put in a couple thousand dollars and they see their money double and they're like, you know what? I'm happy with this. But now times that by like thousands of people doing it at once. And yeah. it's, I don't know. <laughs> it's going to happen and, and it's going to be ugly. You're going to, I mean, what's it at now? Bitcoin. I feel like it, um, it's 40, been around forty thousand for a while. Um, yeah, it's kind of dropped. I know that. Like it never. The high was like in the sixties. Yeah, I um, you said. See. I remember last year you said this was early in the year. Mm -hmm. You said your prediction was by the end of the year of twenty twenty one, crypto oh. would be worth a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. I could not, see, yeah. not Stradamus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, what was it? The what's that guy's name on uh, CNBC? That the uh, money clown, oh, Jim Cramer. Yeah, the <laughs> money clown. <laughs> I don't know. I could see, like, yeah, I probably did say that. I, I don't know if I would have said that. Like, that, that. I don't know if I would have made a prediction You're like, myself. Believe me, man. <laughs> Put everything in you own, even your kids' college. You did not say that. You just said all well, you said was you thought it would be worth a hundred thousand. It's funny you say that because, like, I have like when I look at like my, and like, this, I'm just going to speak real broadly about it. I have like a retirement plan and a 401k. I have like all these different things that I kind of like focus on to like keep me okay when I'm old, and. The two two weird ones I have is I have a prepaid college plan for my kid, which means that if she wants to go off to college, um, the first two years should be covered. You know, all things being equal. Yeah. But then when I started buying crypto, I was like, my plan for this crypto is I want to have a decent chunk by the time my kid goes off to college so I can get her a car or get her, you know, something, you know, that was my plan is like, like, I've always had pretty modest goals when it comes to crypto and I'll bet you I reach them. I bet you I reach them. Now you're right. It could all go away tomorrow. And in which case I would have lost, you know, money. Uh, but um, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I think as long as you invest elsewhere first, how do you cash it out? Like, how do you, let's say it gets to that point that you say you're planning yeah. on going. Good and you're like, yeah, but like, how do you sell it exactly? You basically, the price of cryptocurrency is like, let, let's say you take like a popular system like Coinbase. 
Coinbase has all this Bitcoin that they have in their vault. I'm just going to call it a vault. And pe people are like buying and selling it. And the price goes up and down based on how much people are buying or selling. Obviously, if more people are buying it, the price is going up. And if more people are selling it, the price is going down. And it's all based on these series of auctions. You know, I mean, it's, it's all okay. happens. Yeah, okay. It happens behind the scenes, you know. So but, let's Okay, say, so when you're buying it, who are you buying it from? In... Um, well, that's a good question. Like I own I own a little bit of Bitcoin. I bought some of it early last yeah. year, and I like to watch it just go up and down. It gives me a headache. It moves yeah. quicker than most uh, amusement park rides do. Yeah. So I like to know, like, who did I buy it from when I bought that? Well, you're right because it it is a specific. It wasn't a big deal. All I did was I went on Cash App and I just hit the Bitcoin button. And I bought like I was like, oh, let's put twenty five down. I put another twenty five here. Well, whatever. So I... But like. Why it's where am I buying it from exactly? Well, you bought a specific unit of Bitcoin, you know, um, that you own and that your name, you know, or whatever your your wallet yeah. But where did I to. where did I get it from? Who sold well, it to me? It depends. Like, I mean, what most likely happened is, let's say you used Venmo. No, I got it from Cash App. Oh yeah, let's say you use Cash App. Cash App probably had a large amount of Bitcoin. All right. And as people were selling their Bitcoin back to Cash App, Cash App was kind of calculating the price on it all. And then they're selling you a, 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 the Bitcoin you purchased. Mm. Could have been the exact. I mean, you, you, you'll never be able to track down like you as a person. So why is it? So now when you want to sell it, what do you have to do? Well, I mean, for all practical purposes, you just, or something or no, you just you know, if you're using a service like that, you just I, buy, sell. I just sell it back. Of course, there's fees and all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. But there, I mean, like it is a little onerous, but like um, uh, you would just sell it back and then you'd get it deposited into your bank account. Mm. And that's it. You know, and then you'd be taxed on it if you made money. Uh, and um, well, the reality is the people who got rich from that got rich from it a long time ago. Yeah, uh, yes, but like and I've I've only been involved in cryptocurrency for like a year and a half, all right? And I've seen it go way up and way down over that year and no, a half. No, I know, and that past year it went up like 65, 70, it got super high and then it dropped to like 30 again. And yep. what I'm saying though is my issue with cryptocurrency and NFTs and all that is that one, there's like a very cult-like yeah. Cold like to yeah. it there's a lot of like scheming to it there's a lot of shadiness yeah. to it um there's a lot of people promising like the reality is and they say ridiculous things like oh you still use fiat currency even though it's still based on the dollar of the value yeah um well, some of these people just want to be off the grid. They don't want to pay taxes. They have these fantasies of escaping. But well, then they, if they cash it back in, they're going to have to pay taxes. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, they're going to want that money. What I would call long term thinkers. Um, no, I think some of these people are just assholes too when they say things like that. But like, but like some of it too is based off of like the momentum of the market. Like the reason, the reason you want a lot of people. Um, purchasing cryptocurrency is that you can also buy tokens on an index and then you make money every time someone purchases cryptocurrency you know you make money off the machine so a lot of a lot of the stuff that's sprung up around it is shady as fuck but there's still like real good practical applications for it i think ethereum's like you know buying and trading electricity or something i mean people need ethereum to make the world go round they do. If you if you buy and sell shit and PayPal and Square and all that, you're using Ethereum. You may not realize it, but like that's kind of powering the thing. If you if you were to like we, why purchase, is there gas fees though for like when people buy like NFTs and all that? I don't get that. Like, why are there these like ridiculous fees involved? Yeah, I don't understand all that. To be honest, that's with where it gets super scammy. Now, like I said. I get it. There's like an application to it if it's being used to like where it's behind the scenes stuff. Like you think you're just using PayPal or you think you're using, you're just taking money out of your bank. 
however they transfer the money, whatever they do to wire it and all that, they, I get that. What, what these ads were promising are totally different. Yep, yeah. And the reality is, is they won, what better way to get the market excited than to get billions of people to see it. Yeah, they, sh they should have just made an ad of like a person going through his or her day and showing all the different ways in which they use Ethereum, you know, like. Without realizing it. it. Yeah, without realizing it. But again, know? though, but like that would be, I mean, what's the point of advertising it if you like, I mean, the goal is for them to get people to invest money into these specific coins, open up a crypto wallet or whatever. Yeah. And, I mean, that was the goal of the ads. I think different people have different ideas. And, and that's kind of like why like Venmo and all that kind of, they don't care. Like if you're buying and selling Ethereum or trading it, or if they give you $5 worth of free Ethereum and then you sell it or whatever, they, they don't fucking care about that. They just know that they get a cut of every transaction that's made. Mm. You know, they get well, I'm, just saying, I'm just talking about the ads in general. Like yeah. that to me is... Like I said, that's the other reason why I don't like NFTs is because I feel like what it is is tricking people into investing in crypto when they probably wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. And they're using artists and creatives and brand merchandise and stuff like that to prop up a coin. When yeah. and, and now you have people who probably were never, ever interested in crypto or never heard of it. But now they have, they know of it because like, you know, there's like a limited edition NFT that they want from like right. some musician or from some artist or some comic company or movie company or from Taco Bell. They always say, they're, right, they're right. <laughs> uh, and um, that's my issue with it is that I, you know, again, like, I don't even, it's just like the ad, the patronizing ad. Like, I'm sorry, these are not great accomplishments. Like, right, yeah. This is not the wheel. This is like, this is like some lame, like, or it's like something like even like crypto people like to say, like, if you make fun of it anyway, they'll say things like have fun being poor. That's like, right. yeah. being like their yeah. orange man. that is literally their orange man bad thing. Yeah. Remember that? Like, well, the mm -hmm. right winner say orange man bad. Yeah. Like, it, it is very similar. They'll say that. They all say that. If you say anything about crypto and anything, everybody, I would say, have fun being poor. Or, how about fun being left in the dust? Yeah. And I, yeah, I don't know. I mean. Well, there is a multi-level marketing vibe to it because the only way crypto works is if more and more people adopt it. Otherwise you're fucked, right? So they need, it all, it all needs to be a sell, you know, to some point where right. the music stops and nobody has a chair and that's that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right. Well, that's, depressing um, yeah well it is and that's i guess we'll just spend 10 seconds on it but that's what reminded me of crypto gill remember gill the, the uh, gill is the uh character from the simpsons he's based on the i think he's based on the jack lemon character yeah from 12 no what's the the death of a salesman is the play no, well death of a salesman is a play this is this is a different thing this is the one about like alf Baldwin was in the movie and he says, like, something's for closers. Um, oh, are you talking about Glenn Gary Glenn like, Ross? Yeah. Yeah. There's a character played by J in Jack Lemons, and yeah. he plays like an old, like, kind of loser salesman. <laughs> yeah. That's who Gil is based on. Gil is that makes, well, Yeah, you're right. You're from, right. From, from uh, Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> Gil, I mean, it's like, uh, but he's a great character. He, plays a, he shows up and he's just like, this he's always terrible salesperson. <laughs> really desperate so what was the court what was the crypto thing about it though like just like that character would be like ah oh, i put all my money in like oh geez i put all my money in what muffin tokens or whatever yeah, crusty tokens or something yeah and it I just seemed like you see where crusty's like in a new car like thank you sucker <laughs> and drives away it is weird. I in the in the crypto world at least on twitter or whatever you, you almost everyone feels the need to portray themselves as like a super winner you know like big alpha male super winner like i just made a bajillion crypto dough nuts you know and whatever uh but like then there's also another group that's like like gill that's just sort of a sad sack like oh, i almost 
it could have been, I was almost there, you know. But, I mean, uh, that's like any, unfortunately, that's like any collector's market. Yeah. Uh, any type of like just different, any type of markets. Like, and I think they're, you know, the reality is right now, crypto, regardless of what you said about utilities or behind it or anything like that, but right now it's a collector's item. And, yeah, yeah. You know, like people are playing hot potato with it. And the, the there was a bunch of really rich people who put an ad out and they're gonna take all that money they're gonna make from those uh yeah. new people buying crypto and they're gonna cash out at some point. Well, yeah. I mean, what, what's the goal? The goal is that one day it will be the cash. Yeah, right? well, the goal is that you would be able to move it around like without friction, you know, that you would <laughs> yeah, I mean like it's it, it 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 makes a lot of sense in other places. Like America's got a pretty decent, decently functioning financial system. You may gripe about inflation and stuff like that, but like paying with crypto doesn't decouple things from inflation. I mean, it just seems like there's like a lot of utopianism and a lot of like weird and Randyism at play in a lot of crypto, which is- Well, I mean, it's perfect for like right-wing libertarians. Yeah, it is. And and that's very off-putting. But um, but I I still believe in it. I I, I do. And I I think- You believe in it because your investments have increased? Is that why you believe in it? No, I mean, like, look, I, I've probably doubled my money. Not that it's a ton, but, like, I've done okay in cryptocurrency. But I've been real, like, boring and safe about it. I, I don't do, like, a lot of the weird things a lot of people do. I don't buy NFTs. Yeah. I just, you know, buy big-name cryptocurrencies. Um, and then, uh, but I, I would believe in it even if, um, even if it didn't. And the reason for that is... Um, uh, is some good reasons and some bad reasons. Well, the good reasons are that, like, we absolutely do need a, a blockchain technology to keep track of shit. You know, I saw what happened when the banks lost track of mortgages and the housing bubble, and there's like a lot of stuff that like went screwy. So there's that. Okay. And second is um, I, and this I, I want to be careful how I say this because I don't want to sound like one of those Anne Randy and lunatics, but like. <laughs> trust like, the banks <laughs> i don't trust the banks at all that fucking wells fargo well, is like I mean, opening I don't, accounts and people's names and shit and i mean i don't trust i mean yeah but like why do you trust the blockchain can't the blockchain be totally altered it's, well it's decentralized and they can't be altered but you know, how actually, is it how is it truly decentralized like for a good example we talked about the heather morgan last week and yes. her, and the other guy i don't know her husband they were the couple that uh, basically, I don't know, there were some they money, 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 billions of dollars in crypto. She had NFTs yes. that she was selling pre this happening. And of course, she gets arrested. Yep. So of course, those NFTs now are like huge collector's items. People are going to jump on it. Yeah. So they did. But the FBI got involved and the those NFTs don't exist in those people's wallets anymore. And I don't think they even got refunded their money. Well, they, that they, really just, they don't exist because they were considered uh, like, you know, evidence or whatever. Yeah. But the FBI was able to seize it. So how is it, how is it so-called decentralized that they can go in? Well, they probably didn't have it on like a hard wallet or a cold wallet they probably they probably just like had it sitting on open seas servers but isn't the point in an nft is that it is decentralized and that like not necessarily on a blockchain and no one can take it away but these people it like supposedly yeah let me make sure i'm right about this uh yeah and i i'll say right up front i know a lot less about nfts than i do about other things um but I know that, like, like I don't trust banks, and I don't like. Well, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, Open Seas froze the crypto wrappers and NFTs. Yeah. Your owners want a refund. It was it was Open Sea. It wasn't the the owners. If they had transferred, they they were using Open Sea to hold their stuff, and that was their mistake. If they had transferred their stuff into their own wallet, then nobody could have touched it. 
Twitter, Twitter user F Muppet said they scored a piece of crypto history when they purchased two NFTs from Heather Morgan. Yeah, an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. Uh, arrested alongside her husband. But hours later, the NFTs were gone. They had suddenly yeah. disappeared from OpenSea. The NFT marketplace where F Muppet paid roughly $600 on images made by Morgan's rap persona, Razzlecon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's her name. It's so funny. I just think of the candy yeah. Razzles. Yeah. You it's know, like, if, you, yeah. if you go on Instagram, you can use her music as a as music for your stories. <laughs> I should do that. That's awesome. It's so bad. F Muppet told BuzzFeed News that OpenSea hasn't refunded their money and said they feel rubbed by the $13 billion company. Yeah. They believe they could have sold the NFTs at an enormous profit. Razzlecon's brand has since ascended from failed criminal mastermind to unlikely anti-hero. And it even listed one of the images at 100000 before it was taken down. Wow. I purchased, yeah, something legally, I purchased something legally and fairly within the terms of their platform and contract, F Muppet said via Twitter DM. <laughs> they, I know, F, E, F. Oh, I, guess, I thought F, you were saying like, like it was a fuck. Not F Muppet, <laughs> no, E, F. That's a lot less fun. Funny. All right. Yeah. F Muppet. Fuck Muppet, <laughs> as his friends like to call. Then they decided to send to the person that minted it for sale and had made my purchase worthless. Oh. Over the course of the week, OpenSea has become an unwitting character in an investigation. The Department of Justice called it largest. Okay. I'm not going to read it. That was in BuzzFeed News. Just a you know, give them their, their due. So, yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's OpenSea. I mean, they, they, that right, but it's it, it's the whole thing of it is like it's decentralized. Well, I mean, like, and I, I get point is, it's just I don't think any of these things are as it's like anything. Someone could go in who runs the system could go in and, and change it. I don't think yeah, that I suppose I, so. I'm sure that you're gonna find out in the next five years there'll be a fucking crash, and you'll find out that the blockchain is manipulated. Could be. I mean, just like anything, I mean, it's just the way it goes. Like people, there's hackers and, they, and there's people who find new ways to hack. What? But like it, that could be, but like just about a hundred years ago, people lost a lot of money because the banks just lost it, you know. And like, they, I mean, like shit happens, you know. I mean, like, I mean, you saw Larry David. He didn't, he's like, I don't need a fork. I have. I, I have the vast. Uh, I have, and I will continue to have the vast amount of like what little savings I have in regular uh, financial insurance. Oh, you still use fiat currency yeah. run by the right, the and bank. and I will. I will always do that. You know, I mean, like for, for the rest of my life, I, I would imagine. But like, I think just as it's foolish for someone my age to go all in on crypto, I also think it's a little foolish to just ignore it. You know, I mean, it's it's at least something to consider and look at. And uh, well, you know what? I invested all my money into Rob Leaf, Rob Leaf <laughs> extreme comic books from the early nineties. And let me tell you, uh, I'm they make a good chair. Yes. <laughs> You put them in a the box, the weight, everything, and make a good chair. That's all yeah. I would I guess my my advice to anyone would be like, um, I would, if you know, unless you're like really, really hurting, I would take a hundred bucks and buy some crypto and watch it for a little while. See what happens. Get used to it. I and, did that last year and it hasn't done anything except move up and down a bunch of times. Yeah. I, I put in like 200 bucks. A little bit, yeah, about 200 bucks yep. over like a month or two period. And I have not, as of right now, I've lost money. Oh, yeah. What it's worth, I've lost money. Uh, if you did not get in on crypto when it was $10,000, worth $10,000 right yeah, now, yeah. you lost money. I think well, I bought it when it was like 30 or something. And then it, I started getting money when I so it went up to 60. Then I made money. But and that's that's with the big name crypto. If you go on like the, if you go on the, the, the Dex, the, the, the Dexes, um, go to like Dex, Dextools.com. Dexters Laboratory. There's like millions of new coins being minted like every day. And last night I was on there, the vast majority of these are complete scams, but I saw a coin and I was like, I wonder, and I kind of kept my eye on it and I almost bought some and I didn't. And it's gone up like seven times in value overnight. You know? Guess what? 
it'll probably drop soon. So yeah, but like if I put in 10, 10 grand, and I could have I could have made like seventy grand overnight. I could have. I mean, if you have that kind of money to do that, yeah, I don't. <laughs> what? I don't. Oh, you know, okay. I, you made it sound like you did. You no, made it no, sound not, like you did. No, no. At first, I thought you said ten dollars, and then be like, I had seventy. Like, well, good for you, Joseph. <laughs> or a hundred turns into seven hundred. I mean, like, yeah. No, I get it. Listen, you have to know what you're doing, though. Yeah. You have to have. You have to have that mind most people don't have a good investment they don't have a clue they have no idea a lot yeah. of people are impulsive they might make impulsive purchases well, and I'll, that's where and that's where the uh crypto schemers that's where all the predators are because they know there's a fresh you know the super bowl created a whole new oh yeah uh, the plan of the super, not the super bowl the game but like the, all those commercials uh is there's a whole new fresh batch of people that are now going to buy up coins and, and make it easier for, you know, bring up the value. So then the whales cash out. Yeah, for sure. Well, speaking of places where whales cash out, Trump has... <laughs> where is this going? Where, okay. Trump has Truth Social coming out. <laughs> oh, man. If there's something I would invest every dollar I had, it would be this. This is definitely going to just... Well, it's got a good a model. Thing. It's got a what? good model. It's got a good tried and true model. It's yep. basically Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 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 the bones are there, and that it's Twitter. It yeah, literally looks like Twitter. I think instead of blue, it has red. Yep, it makes sense. You know, the whole red state thing. Oh yeah. Um, um, and uh, how long do you think Truth Social will last? I, you know, I have no idea. It, it can't. It's got to fold either immediately or it's got to morph into something else, you know? I mean, the, the problem with these right-wing uh, safe havens, they call them, like yeah. Getter and uh, what was the other one? Rumble, uh, uh, Telegram. What was the other one, though? Um, Lounge Lizard? What the fuck was it called? Mm, I don't remember that one. Um, masturbate? What was it called? There was like Farmers only. Parlor. Parlor. Oh, parlor! I forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah, all these things is that they get these like right wing grifter, like these influencers, like uh, Candace Owens and all these other bigger names. Yeah. They get them. They give them money to advertise these things so that people sign up really quickly, very fast. Yep. So it makes their numbers look good. But after a month, no one gives a shit. Yeah. And these things fold. Most of them are scams to start with. They're like made by like the dude that's in that uh, Inventing Anna show. Yeah. Uh, like they're just quick money grabs. There's been like six of these right wing Twitters. These so called, yeah. I think it's hysterical that these people who they need a, they keep saying that like people on the left need like a safe space and all that stuff. But like yeah. these people literally need a safe space. They need a safe space to like, because they want to get away with saying like, Racist, homophobic, anti-trans, anti-Semitic, just oh, any horrible thing you could think of that like Twitter has like in the past uh, allowed to grow and fester yeah. and they've become a little bit better at stop, you know, <laughs> little, just, they, you know, after a couple of years of pressure being like, oh yeah, maybe we shouldn't let like actual Nazis tweet like Hitler pictures or something. It's just, I mean, like they, the, the vast majority of engagement on Twitter um, often comes from people you don't necessarily agree with or people you dislike. That's a lot of the engagement on Twitter is based off of friction, you know, and that's why all these right wing only, or even if there were a left wing only, none of them would work because they, they don't offer that, you know, what do you, they're you know? not, yeah, they're boring. I mean, like, yeah. And then the joke is that half the time these places even have to like, they claim that they're for freedom of speech, all these new places. And then you right. find out they also have to like have some standards and practices yeah. too. And then those sites end up fucking crashing and falling right. apart anyway. And they sell their data and it's all, I mean, it's all just like, it's, it's never good. So yeah, they're all like, just get, they're just quick grips. I mean, like the joke is that like, I mean, I don't know, unless they are charging people to use them, but, you know, you can just download it, get an account, go on it. But like you said, 
that's not where they're making their money. They're making the money guaranteed. They are selling your data. They're doing yeah. it worse than Twitter ever did, probably. Oh yeah. And yeah. again, it's just to get attention. Of course, Trump's not allowed on Twitter, but like. I think the goal is, is that this is what I think the true goal of mm. true social, what's it called? True social? Truth social, so, I think. Instead of tweeting your true thing. Yes. <laughs> um, I think that this is what, this is what I think is going to happen. The reason why it looks like Twitter. Yeah. The goal is that Trump tweets or truths or shits on there, whatever the fuck he does on there. Yeah. People screenshot his. Oh, thing. yeah. They post it on Twitter. People think that he's on Twitter because it yeah. looks like Twitter. <clears throat> and I think yeah. that's really it. I think it's like, I'll just have it in there. And then my fans will just copy an image, do a screenshot, put it on the Twitter. Yeah. I'm back, baby. I'm back. You thought you got rid of me. But <laughs> it is kind of weird and sad. I, mean, I honestly um, think it's like that picture looks like. It looks like Twitter. It looks exactly like Twitter. Like, honestly, like. I think he's even using the same goddamn photo. Like, yeah, well, he used the same username, and I mean, he made it look so much like Twitter. Um, it is. I think that that's probably yeah, it's the, the same photo. And my God, wait, hold on. What's the image? Instead of a blue check mark, it has it has a red check mark. See, I mean, it's just stupid and weak. Uh, like this has to be a joke. It looks um, exactly like Twitter. People are going to screenshot these, yeah. post them on Twitter, and it makes it look like he. It makes it look like an official tweet. And I think that's honestly, I think that's what the the sole purpose. The point is. of it, yeah, yeah, Could be. because you know people would screenshot his like a message from Trump's desk. You know, yeah. no one reads that shit, right? But if you use the same goddamn photo, the same fucking right. Layout, I mean, even the font is, is this has to be a joke. Is this really it? I don't, I saw it a bunch today. To be fair, you're right. I didn't go back and um, like fact check it, so to, so to speak. But I don't know. I mean, look, there, in, to some extent, there's only so many ways you can organize this type of like a micro blogging thing. You know, I mean, it's, it's not like he's going to revolutionize it in any meaningful way. Yeah, I remember the best was like he announced this earlier, like a year ago. He had a social media thing, and it literally was just a blog. It wasn't yeah. even this. But like you said, this shit ain't gonna last. And if it does even last at all, it'll never be as big as Twitter. No. I'm gonna give a shit. And like the joke is that all these chuds are gonna still have a Twitter account, they're still gonna have a Facebook account. Yeah. Instagram account they're YouTube always account. tweeting, follow me on Parlor, follow me on Gitter. Like, yeah. Just go there, man. <laughs> just... Uh, well, I'm surprised Trump didn't put out a crypto coin. I think he's actually the funny thing. I think he actually came out against crypto. But I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm surprised he doesn't have. I know his wife put out an NFT. Yeah. Did you hear about it too though that they uh, that the per basically the company that bought made it were also the same people that bought it. Yeah. They said that's very really common. That happens a lot. Yeah. You could. There's like I've seen these clever clever scams where people basically like they make an nft all right uh for very little and then they put it up for sale for two grand and then they purchase the nft themselves with a different wallet and so they get the two thousand dollars from the sale so they're just transferring two grand of their money from one place to the next yeah but now they also have an nft that's worth two grand because that's what it sold for last you know, and it looks a little more valuable than it did before. So then they just re rinse and repeat, you know, and it, it raises the, the goal is to raise the value of it too. Yeah. And all you're doing is moving money. It's like moving money from your checkings to your savings account. I mean, you're not. You're there was a guy I saw, I think we saw that, that tweeted that like about basically what you just said, like moving yeah. one of the other, it's literally just moving your money from one account to another. Uh, and it just it made it look like you purchased it. Yeah. Um, and then you could, the goal is to like, now that it's been purchased that much, maybe I could sell for five times more than right. because now there's interest. Yeah. Um, the other one, did you see the thing about, remember Justin Bieber? There was like a story that went out and it said that he, made, yeah. he bought like a million dollar NFT. Yeah. Supposedly he was paid to say that. 
Yeah, I can see he that. He did not actually buy an NFT. I think he was paid money to say that he bought this NFT. Yeah, that's weak. Oh. Well, he kind of, he's proven to be kind of a little he, douche. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the uh, other big kind of truth social news that I thought was funny this week was um, Sarah Sarah Palin um, finally got her day in court. I just want to get out real quick. I find yeah. it really funny that they use the term truth again. It just continues Trump's gaslighting. Yeah. That he's one of the worst liars on the planet. And that the fact that like he would put out something called like truth is just... It's, it's like so Orwellian, yeah. yeah. Okay, so what about Sarah Palin? She well, she took the New York Times to court, and her trial got delayed a few times because she was busy infecting Manhattan with COVID. Yeah, um, that was insane. I was like, they were having her out eating out and all that shit. Yeah. I'm like, how is this allowed? So she um, she gets into court, and she's talking about how the New York Times slandered her, libeled her, or something. And anyway, the the judge lets the jury go deliberate but while the jury is deliberating the judge is can, the judge comes out and says you know what I, i'm just calling it now times is not guilty i don't care what the jury says because <laughs> she hasn't proved her case at all and then like what was, one, the, what was the argument about like what was she suing about the new york after gabby gifford got shot the New York Times put out that that retweeted the map, retweeted, reproduced a map uh, that Sarah Palin. Yeah, had, she put uh, out a thing. I remember yeah. that she put out a map with targets on it. And they were basically saying in the article that Sarah Palin influenced that killer or that that oh, shooter. Totally did, without well, a doubt. The way she they did. said it, it was like Sarah Palin thought she had a case and. I could see her thinking she had a case, even at the same time thinking she wouldn't win. Um, but you don't have to prove you, you, that you just got to prove you have a case to go to court. So anyway, the judge dismissed it, found the times not guilty or whatever they determined in these types of cases. And then the jury came back and also said that they sided with the New York Times. So it was like a weird double loss that, that is kind of uncommon. Um, but is definitely on brand for Sarah Palin. I mean, like, it was a bullshit. A lot of these late, lately, the right wing, they do this thing where, like, I'm going to sue the news. Like, even fucking yeah. Rogan, when he got called out on, like, the ivermectin thing, he claimed that he was going to sue CNN. Um, yeah. Which I think is really hysterical coming from him. Uh, but, like, all these people, you know, even fucking, like, Kyle Rittenhouse claimed he was going to, like, sue yeah, newspapers yeah. and shit after this asshole got away with killing people. This is what they do. It's like the the Sandman kid that yeah, Nicholas from, Sandman, yeah, yeah. Like supposedly they had like a settlement or something, and it was nothing. Like mm. they try to act like it was this huge victory, uh, right? And I mean, that's what they do. And it, and again, it's part of the graph. It keeps her even at the end of the day, even if it was thrown out or not, she still gets to look like a martyr, and she could say, "Look, the system's yes. working against us. The evil New York Times got their way." You know, I'm just. You know, I'm trying to get the 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 truth out there, but you know, right. they uh, they're stopping us, and uh, it's just part of their angle. It's their shtick, yeah. yeah. It's it's the same bullshit, and you know, it's like it gets us. Hey, we're talking about this nitwit that should have like faded into the ether like four yeah. years ago. Like, do you ever watch the show Married with Children? Yeah. Do you remember there was a season when they literally? They got a new kid, and it was kind of like, his name was Seven. And oh, was I do remember for, that. Yeah, okay. he was on it for like four episodes or something. Yeah, like it didn't last long. No one liked the kid, and they eventually got rid of. It. They just like right. faded him out. I think he was like a cousin of the family or something. Someone something was like, like a that. cousin Oliver or something like that. Yeah, but like a season or two later, they did this thing with Peggy Bundy. The Peggy? No, which was the daughter? Uh, yeah, Kelly. Kelly Bundy was th- trying to remember something and oh. Seven's head crossed over her head on the screen. And like, honestly, that, that's what Sarah Palin should be. Sarah yeah. Palin should be a thing that like after 2010, no one heard of her again. And she's just this like weird thing that happened in politics. Yeah. She helped sink McCain completely and uh, ruined his... And Unfortunately, that didn't happen. They tried giving a reality show, all this stuff. No. They, she had books and all that shit. 
she always finds a way to get back in. Trump was a good way for her to kind of get back in. Yeah. Uh, she's just a shitty person. Like, she, she, didn't even, she didn't even finish her one term as governor. She was such a shitty governor. That <laughs> at, like a couple months after the camp, the two that, so she yeah. was governor. I guess she got in in 2006. Yeah. 2007 is probably when she started after getting elected. Yeah. She gets brought on the King campaign in 2008. So she's only governor for like barely over a year. Yeah. And she, you know, they lose. And then she comes very, comes really big after that. They like, she became like a right wing darling for some bizarre reason. Yeah, you think they would just themselves from her. You think like after sinking a campaign that they would be like, eh, we're right. going to. Thank you, Sarah, but uh, no more. You know? Yeah. No, they doubled down and they like, she's a hockey mom. She's a, she's yeah. a grizzly mom. I'm a hockey mom. She said, what'd she say? Or was her line about putting lipstick on them? Yeah, like, what's the difference between a, a hockey mom and a pit bull? Like, lipstick. The lipstick. Yeah, I think that was it. That was the joke. Uh, yeah, I'm like, it's a stupid, like, Oh, trust me, there were so many lame ass people. Like, oh, yeah. They, they loved it. They were like, I'm a hockey mom too. I mean, <laughs> the news, they were interviewing these people. Yeah. They like, she was them and they were her. Yeah. She literally was like, Mar- like Marjorie Taylor Green, you know. I know we make fun of her. She's awful. She's yep. really stupid. She recently, we talked about the, uh, the what was it? The, what kind of soup was it? The cold oh, soup. the gazpacho. The gazpacho. <laughs> did you? But okay, remember she said the thing about HIPAA rights? Yeah. Whatever. Okay, did I show you that video? On uh, that video that got around of a woman complaining at some I don't know if it's a restaurant or like a yacht thing. Yeah, I saw she's that. Screaming at the girl, and then she's like, "I want to speak to your manager." Right. So and the weird. girl's like, "Hold on a second. She does pretends to do a fake elevator. Yeah. And then comes back, turns around, comes back up, and goes, hello. I'm the man. great. <laughs> and the woman loses her fucking... She's like, oh, yeah. yeah. She's like, what's, what's, what's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. But the best part is, like, something to do with something. It had nothing to do with help. And she screams, this is my... Oh, get that camera off of me. That's what she says. There's someone mm-hmm. taping her. And she's like, you better get that camera off of me. That goes against my HIPAA rights. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like... These idiots, like we all laugh yeah, at her, but it's like she is them and they are her. And they, I mean, this woman's an idiot, but like I guarantee you, there's a ton of people in our saying, like, that goes against my hip or right. Yeah, you know, probably. Like, it had nothing to do with even much. Dale Green was wrong, but she wasn't <laughs> as wrong as this lady was. Like, yeah. what? what the hell does that have to do with this person uh. dating you? Right to privacy, maybe right words to use. I don't uh, know. Perhaps. But that, that woman going down and up that was, that was classic. Like the funniest things that girl deserves a yeah. her own <laughs> show on her own Cinnabon franchise. She needs like her own <laughs> show on Netflix. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Um, I'm sure Sarah Powell will try to find another way. Yes. To come back. She recently, there was a photo of her in like some weird leather jacket. People said that she looked like uh, Corey Feldman in Rock yeah, High School Part Two. I know other people said that she kind of looked like William Defoe a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the joke is that men and women, as we get older, we, you know, we lose our, uh, our hormones. Okay. What happens with us with age, you know? <laughs> And uh, eventually we all just kind of look like old ladies. Uh, or, that's or, sad. Or, or women look like old men. It just it just happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's sometimes the only thing that prevents <laughs> look at Max mom on Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I mean, like you have no idea what I'm talking about. No, I do. <laughs> okay. I'm making a joke. I'm just saying that. You ever, I man, there was this website years ago. <laughs> This is like <laughs> social media. It was a web, literally a website. It was just photos, and it said, <laughs> "I think it said like men that look like middle aged lesbians." <laughs> and like, of course, Lindsey Graham was one of them. There was like yes, a whole, he does, there was yeah. all these photos. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the site still exists. <laughs> so William Defoe and Sarah Palin now are the same person. Yeah, very very yeah. similar. It's okay. 
you know, one's a beloved uh, act uh, person, the other one's yeah. a horrible. Wait, well, I was gonna say this right. One of them's a horrible goblin, <laughs> goblin, and the other one's Liam Defoe. Yeah, yeah. I tried saying that right. All right, what's the next <laughs> one to talk about? I have nothing else to say about her. I'm sure I, I, I will. You know, what new product will she release to get? Yeah, that's, uh, what, what will she do to keep the griff going? We will like probably a hockey coin. Hockey coin. Dude, the other day I saw on Twitter. Kyle Rittenhouse tweeted, and this was like the funniest thing. Oh, yeah. Like, blown away by this, literally. Just like the way he blows away people. Right. I was blown <laughs> away by, um, <laughs> you know, gotta laugh about it because this kid got literally got away with murder. Um, let me see if I can find it. Mm-hmm. Give me one second. I have to yeah. Oh, uh, this is, all right, hold on. Okay. He tweets, we have big news coming. With an right. point. That's his Twitter. Did he ever wrote, reveal what the big news was? I have no idea. Right. I, I just saw that. I, mean, I never, I don't follow him. Right, right, right yeah. But I guess because I looked at his tweets before, Twitter now, I get emails from Twitter. I and suggested. I get uh, one from you. <laughs> I right. follow you. One from some artist. One from someone else. And now Kyle Rittenhouse. And I'm like, ew. <laughs> why are you suggesting this? <laughs> but what... <laughs> What big news could Rittenhouse, a teen domestic terrorist murder, have? Is he going to be at South by Southwest showcasing new product? <laughs> Is he going to kill more people? Disturbing times we live in. Like, what? What do you mean, big news? Yeah. Dude, you literally just murdered people. And that's the only thing you've, a, done, you've in done. Like a yeah. really cowardice way, too, with your machine gun. Yeah. Like, what product? What are you? So of course someone said that it's probably an NFT or something. Probably. But like, yeah, I can see what that. can you offer? Like, what what is he? He's gonna he has a new song coming out. <laughs> He's gonna drop a new hit. Yeah, drop a new yeah. couple of hits. Oof. Like, like I just find it super bizarre. That yeah. is, it's an odd, it's an odd thing. Yeah, we have big news coming. Out. First tweet, he killed another person. I'm mean, like. <laughs> Like, I don't know what, like, if somebody, <sighs> like, a musician says, like, we have big news coming, yeah, that's yeah. probably going to talk about, like, a new song or a new, new song or a tour or whatever, you know, something pertaining to, a, so, like, when a murderer tweets, big what news do you coming, think? I don't know. You know, it's like when Hostess has a new product, I don't expect them to come out and say it's new steak <laughs> or <Yeah>. broccoli. <laughs> it's going to be some cream filled, del- delicious delight. Of course, yeah. Well, then this kid comes out and says, "I have a new announcement." What? Right. You're going to jail? Like what? What do you have? What's your product? What are you offering? You know? <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Um, uh. um. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, <laughs> trolls that are probably uh, mostly propped up by Russian bots. Yeah. Oh, the uh, Russian-Ukraine situation. Yeah, what's going on there? I I don't know. It's it, Russia after the Soviet Union broke up. Russia became its uh, its own country again, and a lot of the other countries uh, became independent. And some of them went pretty right wing, some of them went pretty left wing. Um, but the but Russia has wanted to reintegrate them ever since. So uh, the Ukraine is uh, its own country now. And, but it used to be part of the Soviet Union, and Putin wants it back into the Soviet Union. But there's and, a real reason why he wants it back. It's not just because he misses them. Well, there's a couple of reasons. I mean, he wants their oil and stuff like that. I mean, he, right. He does that, I mean, it's like a route, right? Isn't there like a route that they have in the way of or something? Um, he there's there's different. Yes, that's a big part of it. But he also wants access to like the the their routes and yeah. Well. well <laughs> It is weird. Like there, there probably is like, in a weird sort of way, an argument to be made for, um, for the Ukraine and Russia to be a, a similar country. I mean, there's a stronger argument for them to be separate countries, but it would be like if the United States um, kicked Florida out. One day the U.S. woke up and Florida's like we're our own country, and they left. There'd probably be plenty of people living in Florida that wanted to continue being with the u.s right i mean like there'd probably be more people given the way it all panned out that would want 
explored its base on country, but there'd be a decent chunk that wanted to go back to the US. And I think that's probably true in the Ukraine. I think there's probably a decent chunk of Ukrainians that want to go back with Russia. You know, right. they speak Russian, their heritage is their culture is Russian. They remember the good old days of the Soviet Were you Union. you bought and paid for by Putin just now? You and Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> Tulsi. Um, so, like, yeah, you can... tweeted that Tul- Tulsi was on, like, the new, some, I think, like, Fox or whatever. And she said that you, as long as Ukraine doesn't go to NATO or something. And it was like, wow, Tulsi, where did, you get those, where did you get those orders from? Yeah. Well, the, the bigger point, though, is more people in the Ukraine want the Ukraine to be its own thing. And that's how democracies work, is that you're supposed to let the people pick. Right. And in a perfect everybody way, knows in the United States, it's the minority rule, not by minorities rule, like meaning like, right. but more like the minority political party rule. Yeah. <laughs> well, in a perfectly functioning world, um, Ukraine would be a democracy. It would be its own country. The eighty percent of the people that want it that way would live there in peace and harmony, or whatever. And if you were one of the twenty percent that wanted to go back with Russia, and it didn't work out that way, you couldn't get enough people to agree with you. You move back to Russia yourself. You know that's how. Like, well, over- I mean, if you have a house there and you live there forever, and all of a sudden, I mean, this isn't like it happened yesterday. This has been like what thirty years, forty years. Ago? <laughs> yeah. I mean, when did the Soviet Union fall apart? 88, 89? Yeah, that sounds right. So, I mean, you're talking about like 33 years ago? Like, this right. is like a lifetime ago. It's not like Ukraine, like they broke up like a year ago and they were like, oh, we're back. No, I mean, Putin... the reality is, is that Putin is, is, you know, Russia is really an oil company. Yeah. Putin supposedly is one of the richest men in the world. Yeah. Supposedly one of the richest oil men in the world. And he just wants, he, there's a, I know that there's a Trump, try to do it, to, couldn't get away with it too much when he was right. president. That guy who he initially had, oh, as yeah. his, uh, what, what was the position that he was? The guy from the from Exxon who lasted like a year because, I don't know, Trump told uh, yeah. the Scots of America to go get some pussy or something. Like, do you remember right. that? And God, what was his him. name? Um, I don't know. All uh, I remember was is that McMaster. John him on SNL one time. Yeah. It wasn't it was McMaster. It wasn't I mean, him. What was that guy? Uh, I don't he... Tillerson was his name. Was it Tillerson? Rex, Rex Tillerson. I don't think it was Rex. Uh, yeah, it was him. Yeah. Yeah, he he wanted he was lobbying Obama for years to like open up right group, because one Exxon would benefit too, but he was also like literally that guy was like Putin's best friend. Mm-hmm. Like no joke. Like Putin gave him like an award or something in real life, like an actual yeah. like best buddy award, you know. And Rex Tillerson for years lobbied Obama, supposedly administration to try to get him to yeah. open up. I was like, oh, sorry. And uh, that's why when he went, when Rex Tillerson happened to be in Trump's cabinet from the start, right. it was like, man, this is like so fucking obvious that this guy is so in bed with Putin. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it ridiculous. Was. All, these, all these chips were put into place to benefit him. Yeah, and, yeah and absolutely. But I mean, listen, I don't think anything's going to come out of this. I think, you know, a couple, like a week ago, people were like, oh my God, it's going to start World War III. Right. I don't think anything's going to come out of it. I think cooler heads will prevail. I think uh, there is like a weird panic. People like want to start a war, but. Well, they like, saw it work. They saw Russia take Crimea back. They, they did this in Crimea. They took back the country. And now Crimea is part of Russia again. When did that happen? Again, like that sounds Three, familiar. four years ago. Not that long ago. Hmm. You know? So, I don't know. I mean, I do know that, like, I do know it's a mess. And the only people I really trust are the people who are saying it's a mess and we got to be careful in how we do it. But at the end of the day, if Russia, if the Ukraine doesn't want to be part of Russia, then Russia should step off right i mean that's that's it yeah because if not then it's called an invasion yeah i mean literally like you know 
It's like what we did in Iraq. <laughs> well, they said that this. They said that this is one of the things experts are looking at that may make Putin turn around. Is that they they're estimating that Putin thought that the a larger number of people in the Ukraine would want to rejoin Russia, and that didn't turn out to be the case. And they might still invade it, but they're going to need a different strategy. You know, so we'll see. I mean, I, in a lot of ways, for me, it feels ap- academic, like an academic argument, because I, I don't know people there, and it it's all seems so far away and everything. But it's a big deal. I mean, it is I, my big biggest fear about the whole thing is that I think there's this weird segment in the United States among like certain right wingers, weird yeah. internet people. Yep. And have like really weird ties to like Russian Russian yeah. disinformation. Like they get their marching orders from stuff like Tulsi going out there saying that. Yep. Like, that's not a shock if he would have that position. That's not a shock. Like no. and all these like we you know there's senators and the GOP that like are clearly in bed in some way with with Russia. And, yeah. and I mean, you know, they'll say, like, if you say anything about it, like, all of a sudden you're like, you're pushing Russia phobia or whatever. But I'm like, it's it's a fucking fact, though, that these yeah. people, that there is a weird influence among, like, right-wing media and right-wing politicians in the United States that have very strong ties to Russia. Some of it's, like, it's down to, like, they're, like, Russia's, like, the last white ethno state. Yeah. And, and, and that... There is like some weird weirdness to that. And yeah, Russia was a Christian nation for a while too. You you hear a lot about well, people talking a lot about how they want to make Russia Christian again. And there's like a you're right. There's a little history here. And again, it, it, the Ukraine. The, the reality is, it's just it's well, one, it's a chess piece move, you know, yeah. flexing. But the other is it's. It's a money making opportunity. That's I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, like I said, I don't think that I could be wrong. You know, we could be talking next week about uh and I could say, hey, I didn't think World War Three was gonna start, but here we are. Yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> why would that start World War Three though? I'd be like, really? What? Yeah. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> That doesn't seem likely to start World War Three, not to me, but like, oh, who knows? Definitely put people on edge, though. If that well, things like that can spread. Like, if you have Russia going into the Ukraine, you might have people from the Ukraine going into some other place, and then the next thing you know, more people are shooting, and it can get out of hand quickly. Yeah. Mm. Good times. Good Always times. Good times. Well, we speaking, have our last... of, speaking of good times. Yes. Uh. Well, not really. Uh. What's the stuff they use in the baseball stadiums and like football stadiums? Like, you know, they've been for years, they've been tired of mowing. Oh, right? AstroTurf. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What is that stuff? <laughs> well, AstroTurf is just like fake, it's like what the Brady Bunch had in their backyard, you know, it's like uh, fake, well, fake grass. But there's another definition for AstroTurf, yeah. too. Right? Normally, what you would say, like, there's a, when you say there's a grassroots movement, you mean that there are multiple individual actors that are kind of coalescing together in common cause and just organic. Organic. Yeah. yeah. There's so no money really in it. It's people's passions. They yeah. believe in something. They're, right. they're fighting for something to benefit people. Yeah. But the but, trucker thing in Canada, much like the open back up uh, yes. protest that were going around the US in spring of 2020 oh this is very similar yeah well and the power of a grassroots movement is that um it's just a lot of regular people doing their thing that have kind of like indicated that they care about something and that that can be a force to be reckoned with so these astroturf movements try to make it look like it's a grass turf movement like the open back up ones in 2020 and then this so what is this what are they supposedly protesting about in canada the best I can tell, and I'm pretty sure this is it, is that if they, as a trucker, leave Canada, enter the U.S. to get back into Canada, they must become vaccinated. 
So like if they're just trucking from one place to another in Canada, nothing happens, they're fine. But if they leave the, the country and come back, they need a vaccine to get back in. Well, I would say good because I would assume that the vaccine rates must be better in Canada. Yeah, I think that's the uh, premise. We're unvaccinated going into the United States where um, it's just not. Yeah. We are for a mod- first world country as rich as this country is or whatever it's yeah. supposed to be. It's not well vaccinated in comparison to other countries. Yeah. And so... So this is basically just an anti-mask, anti-vax bullshit yes. protest being uh, pushed by right-wing media, yeah. right-wing politicians. Like, I think we talked about this early in the podcast, right? I don't think this was outside of our discussion. Um, usually, gra- one thing about grassroots protests is usually the cops are not friendly to those. Right, but right. Man, well, those AstroTurf ones, man, the cops are like so much friendlier to the to these fake ass protesters right um yeah so like what are some of the bad things happening from it well the big thing they've done is that they've they've done well, they've done a couple of things one is they've blocked bridges um i don't know if you've ever been to detroit but the ambassador bridge connects detroit basically to canada and a lot of stuff moves back and forth through there a lot of stuff that the auto manufacturers need so these truckers have blocked those bridges uh, blocked those points of entry between the U.S. and Canada and are not allowing shipments to pass through. Um, but they've also all dragged their huge ass trucks into the middle of a downtown core and just start laying on the horn and not moving and just doing a sit-in basically, but with with semi-trucks. So it's been revealed though that there's like funding coming from like four different groups or something. Yeah, I think it's one of those ones where the majority of the funding is coming from the usual suspects, these far right wing groups. But then there's a decent number that are coming from like mom and pops living in weird cities like Poverty Springs, Arkansas, or D's Nuts, Florida. You know, they, they are just like, oh, I want to send 25 bucks to the truckers. And then they do it. And that all adds up. Yeah. Um, and the be- and the thing too that's fucked up about these things is that you, there's been it's spotted uh, swastika flags, Confederate yeah. flags. Yeah, just odd that Confederate flags would be at a Canadian thing. You know, yeah. there's no historical relevance to it. I guess there's no historical relevance to a fucking swastika either. But right, you know. yeah. But the, the wanna... point. Go ahead. Yeah. No, the point ahead. is that a lot of these people are shitty people. There's been a lot. They're just rude and obnoxious and their response to what is a reasonably uh, normal rule, you know, you gotta have vaccinations to come back in. Um, they've kind of weaponized it significantly. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, they, they've just caused this chaos. It, it's been, it's been a mess. I mean, I think the main goal of this is one, I hope it spreads the United States, use this to like cause chaos. Yeah. And whatever, you know, blame, you know, supply chain issues on Biden, midterm shit, you know, it's all like, it's just to create chaos. That's all it really is. And to like say, look, Biden can't do his job. Look, there's supply chain issues. Look, yeah. You know, most look, most of their tactics are just chaos, you know. But I guess recently Canada supposedly froze some assets or something. I know they voted or enacted something where they could basically do a bunch of things. They could arrest people. They could seize their trucks. They could uh, seize their bank accounts. They could um, de-license them to drive a truck or whatever. Um, I haven't read any stories about those things actually happening, but, um, but I know that they are or they, they, they are about to. Um, well, they're going after people who are being funded, I'm assuming. Yeah. And because the, it's almost like some of these people, it's almost like an act of terrorism. In yeah. Way, what's going on. Yeah. It's, I'm trying to find, there's a great clip, Geraldo, on, uh, let me see if I can find it, on Twitter of him like in to fight with all the other right-wing chuds on Fox oh, News. He's not for... He's against the uh, once in a while, Geraldo will, yeah, squeak something out. He's an, an I was found to be an anomaly on uh, 
Fox News. It's kind of like, man, what happened to you? You know, he is an interesting guy. I mean, he's his big the, the joke of him initially was that Al Capone's fault. But um, he's always kind of struck me as just like an interesting person whom I often disagree with, you know. Uh, right. Well, here he has. He actually has a good take. I'm trying to find the video. Oh, here we go. I'll, I'll play it. Yeah, yeah. It's just these clowns. Like, it's like yeah. all they do is lie to their audience. It's like for uh, one I second. I saw this clip earlier. Yeah. For one second, a Fox News viewer got some truth, but it came out of Geraldo's mouth. So <laughs> he's a no good liberal. So. And stop all vaccine. Justin Trudeau no. used these workers for a year. Yes. Two years, excuse me, and made them go to work every day, called them essential, d- basically didn't provide them with what they needed. That's and then Dana in Farina. one stroke yeah. of that, on one day, said, actually, you're no longer essential workers. Yeah. Now you're not essential. It's no. very rude. They, they, but I, gotta, I, I, I have to respond to this thing because Geraldo says a blanketed right wing media is inciting. And it's, it's essentially he's also implicating us because we are defending the How truckers. dare you? We have to, <laughs> I'm okay with that because the fact is we always on the right side we are not like the perfect. right side we're, we're not the right we're not we're right not side. like you Geraldo, which has a disdain for the working class driving to your, your that's it, the 50 years of hard and, work and, and, and you're more not. charity than you'll ever do in your entire <laughs> life no, what my point is coming you don't up, like these guys coming up first ALC uh, this wasn't the clip our, though that was not i know the clip you're talking about the one where he says that some of these people have swastika flags and Piero actually freaks out and says, like, don't tell me that. that What? You're talking about the one where he said he saw people with swastika flags. Yeah, because they were. And it's not that they, I mean, he has eyes. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, he saw what everyone else saw and Fox has to lie to their viewers. I mean, it's so ridiculous, these clowns, because it's like, Mm. You know, the truckers, okay, here we go. I, this call them a power. I think that, you know, the truckers have their right to protest. And uh, it is so annoying when they stop traffic and they inflict misery on innocent third parties that have nothing to do with mm-hmm. them. But my big problem, if uh, Prime Minister Trudeau is correct, uh, there have been uh, Confederate flags. Oh, uh, on oh, 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 uh, no. uh, with in these no, truckers. No. Uh, uh, if that if the prime minister is correct, and I'm only citing him, how does he know that, is, that? Then that indicates that there are amongst them at least some very radical. Give me some complaints of a fight, of an argument, a police report. Don't give me this nonsense. Yeah. Somebody had a flag and I didn't like it, and therefore they're racist. Stop with yeah, that. Nonsense. I love the idea that people in Canada had the container at the flag <laughs> for the love of yeah. Yeah, why do they have it? Good question. Yes. Yeah. That's the nature of their job. They are in their trucks. Mm-hmm. Also, you want to know? Yeah. Are they cold you ever been to a truck, truck stop? Yeah. yeah. It's just such a stupid argument, cool. you know. I love it. They, first of all, the cl- I didn't see. I didn't see the clip of Gutfeld going after Geraldo's like money. When it's like, dude, Gutfeld, you're like, yeah, probably my <laughs> fox. This guy's rich as fuck. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, the working class. I love the all these like Geraldo. All of them, all these people are affluent, super yeah. rich. At least Geraldo is taking a good side on this, at least. Or, or he's good for, time. yeah, he's good for something like this side. once or twice a month. Yeah, but like the idea, the fuck out of your for working class. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, let me tell you, you know, the people who watch Fox News and believe these people, these are the same people that those crypto coins or uh, <laughs> yeah well yeah. Like pray. i mean the joke is though and someone even brought up a good point is like why would you even waste your time advertising the super bowl are people going to understand like wait i have to go get like a meta mask or whatever yeah or shit the, like buying gold off a of fucking uh <laughs> run back on Fox run back. Day, it's super <laughs> easy all you have to do is call them up they'll take your credit card information and yeah buy some some gold. Price gold. super easy this, on the other hand, it's like, okay, you know, you got to go on mm. this site, and then yeah. you got to go on this site, and then you got to do this. These are people who can't even open PDFs. Like, <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding me? So I think it's really funny, but this, I never, like, I try never to watch Fox News ever. I watched yeah. it, like, like I said, I've seen clips, you know, clips like this over the years. It's hard. I have never, like, could not stomach more than five minutes. 
I remember one time I was waiting for getting my car fixed or something years ago, and I was in the waiting room, and they had Fox on for like an hour, and I, my God, I felt like I was yeah. watching something from literally another planet. It's like, yeah, it turns your head into pudding. It's they real weird. literally create a false reality for their viewers. Yeah. That's what they do. Now I know someone will go, what does CNN do? And I'll be like, I don't know, because mm. I don't watch CNN. <laughs> Don't watch CNN. I don't watch MSNBC. Uh, I I get my news from feelings. You know, that's yeah. the best source. That's the best source. Oh, feelings, feelings. Right. Yeah, that's the best source. You, you know, that's you, 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 your feelings. You know, and they're always right. They never can't argue with them, right? Right. Can't argue with your feelings. No, but I mean, all joking aside, but Fox News is literal propaganda. Like I said, I watched it for an hour. I was like, oh my god, this is like, it is just this crafted the whole thing follows a script so Geraldo got off the script for a second yeah and these guys didn't know how to react really well my i love the whole like oh you're saying yeah, he's a hero going you say he's a racist because <laughs> he had a nazi flag and he, yes and he, wore, and he had a nazi shirt <laughs> and he was dressed like a nazi yeah and he kept on saying how hitler are you saying that guy's racist uh I'm gonna to lean towards a wrong, yeah. A wrong, a wrong <laughs> it is bizarre though that like they will steadfastly support this protest and be oblivious to the fact that Black Lives Matter protests were like less disruptive and they freaked out about them. Do you know that Fox News supposedly is not allowed in Canada? Oh, I didn't know that. That's hilarious. because they actually um, have like ethics laws or something. Standards. Like journalism. That's funny. Uh, Fox News is supposedly not allowed. I could be cool. look it up, but supposedly yeah. Fox News and what we see here is not allowed. That's funny. In Canada, because it's just straight up fucking propaganda. No, well, it's what, what it happens. is. Fucking yeah. propaganda. I mean, oh man, what was I gonna say about? It? I don't even know. I, it is just. It's like you said, it turns people's brain into pudding. Like, here's a good example. January 6th. Everything leading up to January 6th was promoted on right-wing media, promoted mm. on, like, social media on yeah. right-wingers. They were promoting it. They said, come to the Capitol, all this stuff. January 6th, Fox News even promoted it. Yeah. And then January 6th happens, and then what happens within 10 minutes after all the footage started airing about all the horrible stuff, January 6th? Oh, clearly there's Antifa. Right. <laughs> so the Fox News audience is like watching and be like, oh, we're going to have this peaceful protest uh, in January 6th at the Capitol, but those darn Antifa, they made us so <laughs> bad. Yeah. Well, hey, those darn Antifa, they made us so yeah. bad. Hey, speaking of uh, January 6th. Yeah. That guy who got arrested. Oh, the Oath Keeper, yeah. Yeah, the Oath Keeper guy. What's his name? It's, it's Stewart something, I think. Um, let's see. Stewart, let me pull up uh, Twitter here. Um, he is a, let's see, Stewart. Uh, Broad? Could it be Stewart Broad? Is that it? Yeah, but he's like the leader of the Oath Keepers or something, and he's going to yeah. face some jail time or whatever for January 6th. Right. He, um, now, he, he has a very interesting look in that he, he looks like uh like a bad guy in in a low budget 80s action movie. Yes. Where He's, half the money went towards the eye patch. He does. He has an eye patch. He has a weird uh like head sinister structure. Goat, sinister yeah. goatee. He looks like Sloth from Goonies, is who he looks like to me. A little bit. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even though he has an eye patch, the eye patch isn't halfway down his face. Like, True. Good point. Uh, but yeah, I, I can see what you mean. Uh, I was thinking Toxic Avenger. Sorry, slow. Oh yeah, yeah. But they both have eyes that droop down. Yeah. yeah. It'd be kind of funny if his eye patch was like on his cheek, and then I'd be like, "Holy yeah. shit!" Uh, and then it was weird too because he kept it, during his court case, he kept on talking about Rocky Road and Baby Ruth. Mm. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> oh, baby Ruth. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mom, you've been bad. Yeah. That's not, I mean, it was weird 
that he did that in the courtroom. It is. It is. Well, he, I think he's still in a slop impression. I think he's still in an Oklahoma prison and they're debating whether they want to bus him to Washington, D.C. And um, all these the defendants are terrified to go back to Washington, D.C. because they don't want a trial of people who live in Washington, D.C. You know what he um, said uh, on January 6th when he was oh. there to get attention? He went, Hang you guys! <laughs> he is the only one who did the truffle shuffle before uh, entering the Capitol, which is yeah. odd. <laughs> For chunk, he's like, this yes. is for chunk. Um, so he got arrested, but there's this awesome photo of him, and he yeah. has the eye patch. And I, I tweeted this thing. I said, "Tell me you carry a twenty-sided dice everywhere you go," but I'm actually telling me you carry a twenty-sided right. dice everywhere you go. And some people got a little upset because they thought I was correlating like right in the to fascism, and I'm, I was saying the opposite. I said. Not saying people carry 20 sided dice or fascists. I'm just no. saying this guy, first yeah. glance, looks like he carries a 20 sided dice. Yes, different. Uh, yes. And then uh, this guy, now clearly a Warhammer 40K guy. <laughs> there's, some, there's another photo with him <laughs> where he's wearing a, this guy would be a Photoshop, a fedora? Someone, oh. someone tweeted, Hashtag, I think you should leave Stewart. Uh, <laughs> it's a picture of him. It's in that tweet. Do you see it? No, let me see. One of the comments on the tweet that I did. And the picture of him is definitely, definitely looks more like Sloth in that picture. He is an interesting looking guy. All right, I'll let me see. Uh, pulling this up here. He is missing an eye. He wears an eye patch. Yep. And I think he shot himself in the head as a child. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. Probably fucked them up more than just losing an eye. Yeah, probably. Oh, yeah, that does look a lot. Wow, well, yeah. And I said, my apologies to the 20 sided dice carrying community, but you know, you gotta have to start policing. <laughs> that was a great I like this one guy tweeted the little semi Cohen wrote, maybe we can start some sort of trade in program where for each gun you get a 5e DM guy. <laughs> And I said, got to give people an alternative to carry out their fantasies. I mean, this asshole, supposedly he went to like yeah. MIT or something. Yeah. Or whatever. yeah. It's like a well-educated person or like that. And it's like, he, he falls into this bullshit. Yeah. And it's like, honestly, if this guy just like became like a D&D dungeon master, he'd have like, yeah. you know, he'd have a nice week, life. Yeah, he wants a week. Does, or twice a week does that and then he can like just live his life and he has he can get out like wherever he can LARP maybe too do some yeah. fake sword fighting and just get out like whatever weird aggressions or fantasies that you have because I imagine being an oath keeper is like uh, a form of weird fantasy that's no, kind of be, yeah. a reality and like if this guy just like you know I'm sure that like you know he wears the eye patch and everything I'm sure yep. if he was like a, a Dungeon master, I would say that he's the type probably doesn't have a good sense of humor. I think he would, yeah. that, but you know, he definitely would have no. He would not Very tolerate. Sense of, yeah. No, he would not tolerate people that did not stick to character. If you're a fucking mage, you better play that part. Right. Don't try to do any shit. That I'm trying to heal anyone. From. Yeah, because you're a mage, right. and uh, I'm sure he'd be no nonsense. But he also wouldn't be in jail for probably. Yeah. Like, now this guy also looks like he uh, carries around a hawk, like yeah, yeah. Like he has like a leather one of those leather gloves, and a, and like he lift his arm, and a hawk would fly and land on it. Right. And that they you know they put like the mask on the hawk. Yeah, like, for his carries, fairy grin. <laughs> yeah, why do they do that? So they don't like murder your face or something? I think so. I think so. They don't get distracted. I I don't know, but I think I always assumed that was it. I thought they like they. First sight, they will like claw your face off or something with their. Mm, that's the rancor. <laughs> the rancor had the same thing. Right. It. They had a little mask over his eye. His adorable yeah. little bulldog eyes. <laughs> that sweet little <sighs> rancor. But yeah. like you know, this guy has a, a like an eagle or a peregrine. Yes, probably. Like, like totally. And again, I'm not saying that this guy. Uh, if you carry a twenty sided dice, this doesn't make you a bad person. No. This guy. Sure. Looks like he carries one around, <laughs> and you know the Christian right 
uh, a lot of religious groups, a lot of just yeah. in general the media, they demonized Dungeons and Dragons for years. Oh yeah. Uh, even to this day, there's like a weird stigma still attached to it. Probably. And yeah. If this guy, maybe he was going to be like in the, you know, he was ready to start a campaign. And then he found out like his church told him like, you can't be part of this. Mm-hmm. And he ended up being like, well, I need to release my fantasy somewhere else. And now he's okay. in the keepers. And, and, and he could have just done this from home. You yeah, know, with, in like, his bed. He could have ordered Domino's and just like, you know, had some soda and chips or beer yeah. or and just play an awesome game for like a couple of hours. Get it out of your system. Uh, you could still keep the eye patch. It would have worked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, look at him now. He's rotting in jail. Flew too close to the sun. Too close. You, now you know. I wonder how many January six people are at this uh, fucking truck thing. Yeah, like, that's a good question. Got to be a bunch of them. That has to be overlap. Be. Yeah. Which would be a great way to like you know bust them. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't even. Yeah, the, the chairman. I mean, this, this is just a distraction. That's all it is. It, it's causing chaos. And I mean, the canon thing's a little weird about seizing assets. But fuck if it, yeah. it. Let's say this: if they seize the assets of, like, let's say the people funding it, right? That would be awesome. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I agree that maybe some of the ground level people aren't as criminally mastermind ish as some of the top top level people. That that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know we were going to talk about Doctor Strange. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah. You see the trailer? Um, I did. I, I did. I look. This movie looks awesome. I like this, the uh, the vibe to it. It does remind me a lot of the Marvel comics I used to read, like in the seventies, where it was like all this bizarre sci-fi stuff. Um, I, I'm sure it'll be good. What do you think? Did you hear Patrick Stewart now? Yeah. And that is, I mean, uh, that is exactly what it sounds like, right? They're telegraphing Professor X. Well, okay. So they kind of hinted at it. So in the comics, and uh, like, this isn't going back to the 70s. This storyline goes back early, like early mid 2000s, like 2005 or six. Okay. Brian, Michael Bendis introduced this thing called the, um, fuck, what were they called? The Illuminati. Yes. Okay. And it was it called the Illuminati? Well, the Illuminati is is one of the groups that was mentioned with this. I don't remember that particularly, okay, but yeah. yes. I was gonna write Marvel Illuminati. I want to make sure it's that. Um, basically, you find out that for the entire Marvel universe, mm-hmm. there have been secret meetings with Doctor Strange, Mister Fantastic, okay. more. Black Bolt, which is kind of funny because Black Bolt can't talk. Right. Iron Man, Professor X. Sure. And they have these meetings and they kind of like discuss whatever. And they're the ones that are like making sure things actually get done. They trade notes, you know, like, hey, the, yeah. how, do we, how do we stop the Kree from coming here? And you find they did like a mini series too that was kind of cool. It's trying to show different events in the Marvel Universe and like yeah. what the Illuminati did. It's called retconning or whatever. Yeah, in yeah. the comics, you know, wait, wait, what? This thing's, it's been like this for years. Only comics can get away with that. But in the movies with this whole, um, what they call it, multiverse of madness, oh. uh, whatever happens in it, whatever, uh, if you notice, it was like, they call them like Ultron robots or whatever. And I think there's going to be some stuff from, uh, what were they called, TVA or something from Loki? Yeah, the time variance authority. Yeah, supposedly right. that's going to play into this a little bit. I think Kang might show up in this. Or yes. a Kang. Yeah, that and all for, makes sense. So the rumors is, is that we are going to see characters that were not in the MCU, but they're part of the multiverse. And so like Patrick Stewart's Professor X. Yep. It doesn't mean that Marvel is going to have Patrick Stewart back as their Professor X when they do one. It's just that this is a variant. Right. And these rumors from now we don't know, which is that voice was definitely Patrick Stewart. Who knows? He might not be Professor X. He might be a totally new character. We don't yeah. know. But it gets people talking. Uh maybe he's hey, movie even cool. Well, he's playing Picard. I'm like, fuck it. It's a crossover. Yeah. You know? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, but supposedly there's rumors that like Mr. Fantastic. Now the problem is that like, you know. 
there's like all these like people for some reason want John Krasinski to be Mr. Fantastic. I did not know why. Mm. I never got the guy from the office. I never understood why they want this guy to be Mr. Fantastic. Either, <laughs> but I do hear that one a lot. I mean, I guess he has kind of a shtick that would work for it, but um the guy who would be perfect Mr. Fantastic is the dude from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh Dane DeVito. No, uh <laughs> no, the guy who plays Glenn uh, uh Glenn Howard's his name. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Um, he would be perfect. He was an AP bio and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. He'd be perfect as Miss Fantastic. Like, John oh. says he like, should play like a... He's too big. I don't know. I, I don't... I think there's like a weirdness to him. Uh, like, right. that Benghazi movie. I don't know. I think he... Uh, that good news bullshit. Yeah. He, um, mm. But I don't know. I suppose there's rumor that like Tom Cruise is going to play a variant of Tony Stark. <laughs> I saw that he's going to be superior Iron Man, right? Yeah, but then I think that rumor got shot down. See, everyone thought that there was like this glowing character flying in, and they thought that was superior Iron Man because superior Iron Man kind of looks like that, and he has like a right. little stone on top of his head. But then, suppose there was like a high definition close up, and they said, no, it's it's Kang. It's Kang variant. Mm, nice. So the whole, who the fuck knows? I think, you know, they release these trailers, still have a couple months for the movie to come out. I mean, it'd be kind of cool. I just don't know how they would. It's like the okay, so when you had the old Spider Man show up in Spider Man, mm-hmm. it was fine because it was like they were just variants of Spider Man. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, that's cool. It's Spider Man. Right. <laughs> it's just different versions of it. Yeah. It just makes, just kind of makes that. no sense that they yeah. look completely different, but whatever. Um, but like, we haven't been introduced to any of these characters really yet in the Marvel Universe movies. Now there's right. like, well, like the old Fantastic Four movies, there has been two of them. Miles Teller one that also yeah. came out, with and then the, the Miles Ian and Chong one, which was even worse. <laughs> <laughs> the Malaysia one. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I meant. Ian Miles Chong. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, you're right. There was two Fantastic Four movies, and neither of them really did real well. Well, the first one had two had sequel at least. Oh, yeah, I don't know. yeah. I don't, like, don't... I, I just think, like, I hate as much. Okay, it was cool to see, like, Spider Man. It was cool to see the other Spider Man. It was cool to have one yeah. go back and all that. But at the same time, like, I kind of want, like, a new Norman Osborn. I want to, like, yeah. You know, I want, like, I think it just confuses the audience. Like, okay, I mean, yeah, it's kind of cool that Patrick Stewart. I mean, the guy was in like freaking ten X Men movies. Right, it makes sense that he would be it. But like, they were talking about like John Krasinski. If he's in it, he might play Mister Fantastic, but he doesn't mean he is Mister Fantastic in the movies. He's just playing him in this. He's a variant, right? I don't know. We'll see. The movie looks like it's gonna be nutty. It's got Sam Sam Raimi. Oh yeah, I'll bet you it's real good. I supposedly the. Tony McGuire and Andrew Garfield are going to be back for this. They got them to be in right. Spider-Man, and supposedly they're going to be in Multiverse of Madness also, mm. which kind of makes sense because yeah. they're, you know, they're part of the the multiverse. In the multiverse, it's already, yeah, it's already been established. Well, um, I'm looking forward to this. It seems nuts, um, but I think I, I do kind of agree with what you're saying. It is, it is a there's like a variant of like it's hard to tell like what's going on. Supposedly, I mean, he said nightmare a couple of times, yeah. and the, the rumor going around is that, and he is considered a major villain of, of Doctor Strange is the character Nightmare. Yeah, so it would make sense. But there's like two Scarlet Witches in this. Mm. There's like one that's like what we see in the end in the costume, right. but then there's one that kind of looks more like the way she is if like. What happened in WandaVision did yeah. go well. And then there's oh. like an evil Doctor Strange. And I'm wondering, I'm like, is he supposed to be like the more wicked Doctor Strange? Is he supposed to be the one from what if? I that would that was my guess. Because I, did I you am... see the end of the trailer? They showed like Doctor Strange and it was like all these like tentacles coming yeah. out of him and shit. And I'm assuming that was what we saw in, in what if. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be kind of cool yeah. that they would show that, like, hey, this is the what if stuff isn't just a bunch of junk. It could have like actual effects in the right. movies and stuff. Raise the stakes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. 
Smart. <laughs> host this new product. Uh, steak. Mm. Did you ever eat steak homes when you were a kid? Yeah, they're weird. Yeah. It's like Very you get strange. them, they're like these red, it's like a big red triangle. Yep. And then you cook it for like two minutes and it shrivels down to like nothing. Yeah. It's supposed to be like a quick way to make a steak sandwich. Is it is a shrinky dink? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, mostly, I think most of the fucking like cheesesteaks in general would use that. I think so. That would be my, or something very similar. Man, I haven't had that in years. I wonder if it's good or not. Oh, it's got to be great. Sweaty meat. <laughs> I just remember being like wet. Yeah. The meat sweats. Did you? Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's it. There's a show on Netflix with Will Arnett where he plays like a, a detective. It's yeah. a new show and every episode has a new... Has, so it's like weird. It's like scripted show but like the guest star has to ad-lib. And doesn't oh, really okay. They have to solve the murder or whatever. It's Interesting, a really yeah. show. Conan O'Brien's in like the first episode and then like um, Sharon Stone's in it. Oh jeez, okay. The football player who's actually really good and I forgot his name. Oh. Um, I highly recommend it. Yeah, yeah, I'll check but, that out. Isn't that the Conan O'Brien episode? They go to lunch and well, I asked Tom, I'm like trying to sell him on this sandwich. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You'll never have a wetter sandwich. <laughs> like, how is that a good thing? That Fuck. sounds awful. Yeah. <laughs> a wetter sandwich. Yeah. Uh. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Uh, I think I think we're done. Sure. <laughs> done. The wet sandwich pushed us over the edge. Yeah. You know, talking about the, the dungeon master guy. Yep. Cyclops. And we talked about Sarah Palin. Yeah. We talked about the fake truckers. Or I mean, Gutfeld. Greg Gutfeld said that that's the working class, and mm. that man never lies. Might so. argue. You can't argue with that, you know. Judge Perino, or is that name? Oh, Judge Lord, Perino yeah. said that just because a man carries around a swastika doesn't, doesn't mean really, yeah. you know? naturally. Oh, no, great person. Only good people do that, you know. Yeah. They do it to get reactions, I mean, you know? provocative. <laughs> and you down a spooky maze, or you no, know, was it a spooky yeah, maze? spooky maze? Leading, <laughs> leading it to it, just didn't. Did we lead anyone to their own? Uh, I would like to think so. Between uh, inventing Amy and Crypto Gill, or maybe between Sarah Palin and Sloth. <laughs> <laughs> sloth and, and racist Sloth. Right. Then uh, probably he, somewhere, yeah. There was a, uh, a maze of, of, of horror. Trump's <laughs> new uh, screenshot uh, night where he's like, hey, I made this look like an old tweet. Can you just screenshot right, it? Right. Just... So people think I'm on Twitter. Please, President Gill. Help President me out. Gill. Help old Gill out. Help old... Oh, I just dumped all my money. I saw Larry <laughs> David. He said that I don't doubt things. And... Oh, jeez. No, Gil made it really screwed up this time. Oh, Gil. Now I have to go get a meta mask or some <laughs> bullshit. Gil doesn't understand. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. on that note, I'm Rob Israel. I'm Joseph K. You still going on about that? Thank you for listening to You Still Going On About That. Um, please like, comment, share. And if you haven't done already, please follow us on Instagram. YSGO, Facebook YSGO, and Twitter YSGO. Thank you, and have a great day.